Hello, everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice is coming good and clear. Please invite your friends, and uh, please invite Muslims. Uh, so if there is any would like to call us and, uh, uh, you know, give us some answers, that would be nice and beautiful. Today, our topic is Quran versus the Bible. You see, if you go in, uh, in YouTube, you will find thousands and thousands of videos made by Muslims speaking about the preserved Quran. And, you know, for me, I don't really care for the Quran preservation or not, uh, because, I mean, what they call a preserved today is enough for me to prove that Quran is false and Islam is false. So you say it's preserved, you say it doesn't preserve, doesn't make any difference anyway. However, we are going to speak today about the preservation of the Quran and uh, in the same time, which book is the true book? I mean, the Bible or uh, the Quran? You see, there is something everybody forget. <clears throat> and this is what usually the Christians do. You know, Christians, when they debate Muslims, they debate them as they are debating a, uh, an atheist. <clears throat> As simple as that. So, uh, <clears throat> let us say that the purpose of the debate is missing. A Christian, generally speaking, he is unaware he is debating who. So he think if he debate a Muslim is the same as debating an atheist, is the same as debating, a, a, you know, a Hindu. Debate. I mean, it's they have their own logic those who call themselves debaters from the Christians side and I'm a Christian as you know but the fact that debate with between us and Muslims is destroyed I mean the Muslim they lose the argument since they made the argument what is the argument the argument is that the Bible is corrupted I put the whiteboard there because we are going to draw some stuff Bible is what corrupted all right. Who is the one who say that? <clears throat> the Muslim. So this is the first claim a Muslims will come to you or the Muhammadan they will come with. So let us put the claim in the top in the screen. <clears throat> and I hope the Christians are listening carefully and not that they are here not for uh, like, uh, you know, chat and entertainment. Please listen carefully. I'm not here to waste my time. The Bible is corrupted according to Muslims. That's that's what they say. Okay. Who is a Muslim in the chat would like to say I agree with that? Who is a Muslim listening to us right now or he would like to call us and he is willing to say I agree with this claim? Do we have any Muslim? <clears throat> Do we have any Muslim here agree that the Bible is corrupted? Anyone? No, this is very good claim actually. I like this claim. Anyone? <clears throat> Who is a Muslim agree with this? Okay, we have somebody saying I agree with this claim. You see, anyone who is here to play games and like this is not for kids. If you are not a Muslim and I say I agree with this claim, I will ban you. So this is not a place for kids. We want mature people. Who is a Muslim? Anyone? Look like we don't have any serious Muslim here. But look what the Muslim he just did. By saying that the Muslim, or the Muslim by saying that the, the Bible is corrupt, do you know what he did? He just proved to us that Islam is false. And this is why. If we ask the Muslims where the Bible is coming from, he will say Allah. Who? Allah. And when we mean the Bible, we mean two books. 
actually more. We mean, according to the Quran, the Quran mentioned uh, uh, the book of David, and there is Suleiman. He have a book. David have a book, and even Abraham have a book, and Isa have a book. So we are talking about many books, and Moses have a book. So when we say the Bible, we are saying many books, all of them one shot. Okay, who is the one who sent this book? Allah. So what the Muslim is saying to you that Allah is God and he cannot protect his books, not only one book. Are you getting the point? So this is the claim of the Muslim. The Muslim coming to us, he have big missiles saying, hey, hey, I'm strong. I want to show you my God, what he can do, what your God can do. Your God, he lost books. Your God cannot protect his books because those are supposedly the books of Allah. Are we taking notes? So when you debate a Muslim about the Bible, don't start quoting for him verses from here and tell him we have many manuscripts and all this. Why do you want to do that? This guy, he gave you a hammer. He gave you a big nail and he is asking you to use it. So as long you are saying that Allah is sent the Bible and the Bible is corrupt, so the Bible of Allah is corrupt. This is the correct sentence now. This is the conclusion. So a Muslim is coming to me, debating me about the Bible to be corrupt. He is saying to me, the Bible of Allah is corrupted. Okay. That's wonderful. As long you are a Muslim and you are saying to me, Allah Bible is corrupted. What's my problem? <laughs> Do you understand people? The debate is over. Do we understand? The debate is over. Two seconds, 30 seconds, one minute. A Muslim crying, oh my, my Allah, my God, his name is Allah, and he sent the book, and his books are corrupted. Okay, nice to meet you. So what we will do now? What kind of God? He cannot protect his book. Actually, this is, should be a reason for anyone to leave Islam. This should be a reason for anyone who believes in Islam to leave Islam immediately, because you have a God who, according to Muslims, he sent 124,000 prophets. How many? 124,000. What? Prophet. Oh, boy. And each one of them, he come with book from Allah. Okay. And all the prophet books are gone. What? What, what, what? Except one prophet. <laughs> so, one twenty four thousand minus one are gone. What is the result? Guys, what is the result? Who is a who is a Muslim here? He is good in mathematics. 124,000 prophet books are gone. We have only one supposedly left. What is the result? Hmm? 123,000 and 999 are lost. So imagine if we give Allah a job to work as a like a lab library guy. Allah is the biggest loser in history. 
He we give him one hundred forty four thousand books. He was able to protect only one. So how we can trust Allah? Very Muslim. Imagine you leave you, you you leave your son at home and you tell him, okay, I will give you one four one hundred twenty four thousand dollars. You come back home, and your son, because he's a good boy, he he only was able to protect one dollar. This is Islam. I challenge any Muslim to say you are lying. And then we have another question. Those 124,000 prophets, Allah sent them for what reason? Uh, they say uh, to deliver a message, okay? Do Allah knew that their message will not be delivered anyway? Uh, Allah is all-knowing, okay? So why Allah did not preserve the 124,000? Uh, Allah knows best. No, Allah do not know best. Because there's no point of sending all those messengers if you cannot preserve the message. Now, the logic of one only, one book only, is a protected. This is the logic. This is the Muslim logic. All the books of Allah are protected. No, they are not. Only one. So the Injil is corrupted, the Torah is corrupted, uh, uh, the book of David is corrupted, the book of Solomon is corrupted, the book of Abraham is corrupted, you name it. Only one book, brother, Allah preserved. What does that mean? What does that mean? Any Muslim can tell me what does that mean? Allah, He has a selective service. Allah is like a security company. He decided to protect only one book. Hmm. Only one book. But isn't it all the book of Allah or the book of Allah? Is the word of Allah is equal to the word of Allah or it is not? If the Torah is the word of Allah and the Injil is the word of Allah and the Quran is the word of Allah, so why Allah will not protect the word of Allah? The answer is very simple. Allah has nothing to do with those books. And Muhammad, he could not find himself there. So he have to say, and the Muslim, they have to say, you change the books. But however, I like the idea of Muslims saying that the book of Allah is corrupted because that will lead us to prove that Allah cannot be God for nobody can corrupt the word of God according to the Quran. Let us take a snapshot for this so later we can use it and we do not need to type this thing again. Smile. Bingo. All right. Now, <clears throat> in the Quran, it says, Inna nahna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidhun. What does this uh, verse mean? It is us who sent down the dhikr and the Muslim between the two brackets, they said the Quran. But the Quran did not say the word Quran there. Where is the word Quran in, 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 the, in, the, in the verse? There is no, this is why they put it between two brackets, i.e. the Quran. And look here at the fabrication. You see, Islam is a religion of corruption. If Allah did not say Quran, how you say it's Quran? 
this guy claiming that Allah is saying that he sent the dhikr and the word dhikr here is the Quran who is a Muslim he agree with this translation that the word dhikr here mean Quran any Muslim agree with this any Muslim agree who agree Anyone? Anyone? Dhikr means the reminder, but this is the name of a book. This is not just a word, mere reminder. A dhikr is the name of a book according to the Quran. Let us show you how they lie when they say Allah is saying He will protect the Quran. If we go to different verse on the Quran, we will find this. Remember how the, the 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 word look like actually you know what I'm going to open two pages so we can place them next to each other All right <clears throat> In different verse in the Quran it says The following Chapter 16 verse number 44 and chapter 21 verse number 115 both of them they are mentioning the word a vicar but the chapter 21 make uh, verse 105 make it so clear what a dhikr is it's not the Quran here we go and this is the Muslim translation we are using the same translation for the same translator isn't it we will check it out so it says here that indeed we wrote in the Zabur which is the book of Psalm i.e. all revealed in the holy book the Torah and the Injil so what the word as zikr mean what is a zikr let us change the translation maybe the translator here he was not successful to make it uh, good maybe his lies is not working let us go to Yusuf Ali okay Yusuf Ali saying the following before we wrote the book of Psalm, or we wrote in the book of Psalm, after the message was given to Moses. So what is a dhikr? Is what is given to Moses. You see, this is the same word. You see it? It says here, and we wrote in the in the book of a Zabur. Muhammad, you have a very funny names for those books. I mean, how how the book of Psalm became Zabur, I have no idea. Don't ask me. Even the name is not right. Because Zabur can be a private part of a man. Just take the Tashkil and you can pronounce it differently. And remember, the Quran was not written with Tashkil. Tashkil is those things you, you see in the top. So, and the Zabur, uh, uh, we wrote in the Zabur after the Dhikr. So the Dhikr, was something ancient this is not the Quran so why here in the translation they say that the word dhikr is the Quran how they come to this conclusion the Quran make it clear that the word dhikr is the Torah so based on this verse the Quran saying that Allah he protected the Torah however this is not really a big deal for me. I'm just getting them busted with their claims. Let us say for the sake of argument, Allah, he protected the Quran only. And he said he is going to protect the Quran. But isn't it Allah, he said in the Quran, and nobody can exchange the word of Allah? The Quran says that.
again if you ask the Muslims when Allah he said <clears throat> nobody can change all, all those verses saying the same by the way hmm? chapter 6 verse number 34 chapter 6 verse 115 chapter 10 verse number 64 chapter 18 verse number 27 what it says nobody can change the word of Allah do you see it none can change his words okay is the Injil is the word of Allah they say yes is the Torah the word of Allah they say yes is the book of Psalm the word of Allah they say yes is this verse the word of Allah they say yes but Allah says nobody can change the word of Allah <laughs> Do you see the stupidity? So what the Muslims they do, they have selective understanding. They don't even respect their book. The word in the Quran is so clear. Nobody can change the words of Allah. He did not say some of the word of Allah. He said, nobody can change the words of Allah. So either Allah here is lying, Aka Muhammad, or this is true. Then all your statement about the Bible is corrupted is a stupid statement. Who told you that uh, there is 124,000 prophet? This is a kid can search it in Google and can find it. I'm, I do not need to give you a proof for that. Just search it. it will take you two seconds in Google. You are a you are you are a, you are a potato couch, <clears throat> or they call it what? Couch potato. <laughs> Show me, show me where it says uh, 124 prophet. Just uh, type it in Google. Did you know Did you go in and I'll come to daddy? Let me look at the Muslim. A Muslim, he is saying to me, he never heard that Allah sent 124,000 prophet. This is the first time he heard it. Yeah, the only thing they hear is uh, the Bible is corrupted, brother. But look what happened here. Not only this is a contradiction for what Allah said, and we showed you that the word dhikr mean the Torah and whatever books came before in the beginning. But the Quran confirmed in many verses that nobody can change the word of Allah. Now, if we ask the Muslims, what is the first chapter was given to Muhammad? They will say to us, chapter 96. Chapter what? 96, brother. Oh. So if Allah, he gave Muhammad the chapter number 96. So why it is 96? This should be number one. Correct? Why you are not reading the tafsir of that verse? Tafsir of who? You Muslim don't agree about it. And you know what? Even if tafsir says that this is me in the Quran, that will be stupid. Again, will take us to point number zero that Allah cannot protect his Bible, cannot protect his Torah, and, and, and that will make it even more horrible. So read the tafsir, that will help me more. Actually, I insist to agree with the tafsir, and I will show you why. I like it more. When you say that Allah, he will protect only the Quran, that's mean, obviously, Muhammad is a scam. Because why Allah will protect the Quran if the Quran is the same as the Injil, the same as the Torah, the same as all his books? Are you saying to me the Quran is made of gold and the rest of Allah books are made of silver? Are you saying to me that the word of Allah is not equal to the word of Allah? Are you saying to me that the word of Allah is not eternal? So that all will lead us to understand that Islam is a shish kebab hummus. That will be stupid. And look at the corruption in front of our eyes, the proof in the front of you. They say we never change anything. Who is the one who put a chapter 96? As 96 read the tafsir verse uh, 6 115 will make sense to me well my friend nothing makes sense to me because 
it makes sense to you to say that Allah protect the Quran only why you tell me tell me how it makes sense Allah is the is the is the Injil is the book of Allah the answer yes the Quran says so according to Islam not according to me so why Allah will not protect his book who is a Muslim when I, who is a Muslim when I give me a call he is my hero why Allah would like to protect the Quran only not the rest of his books who want to tell us who is the hero have an answer they have no answer because this is a very silly argument no answer any Muslim have an answer this is your book and this is your Quran saying that actually not only that we have a we have tons of contradiction look this is a chapter 3 verse number 3 it says نزل عليك الكتاب بالحق مصدقا لما بين يديه he sent to you the book with the truth confirming what is between his hands how you are confirming what is between your hands and yet you claim it's corrupted guys look at the muslim answer hold on i want to show you the muslim answer just to show you show you the comedy a muslim he said Allah did not protect the book because it's a test. That is the most silly answer ever. Well, we are tested since the time of Adam. Isn't it enough the sin we have? What test? Test for what? <laughs> what is what is that? Isn't it the test to believe or not to believe? So look what you are saying. Allah, he sent the book, he gave it, he gave it to the shaitan so he can play with it so shaitan can deceive people and use the word of God, making them, the, the, the poor people, believe that they are worshipping God, but the fact shaitan deceived them. That's mean Allah, he himself is a shaitan. Now, if we ask this Muslim, a very simple question, is the Quran, Corrupted by the will of Allah or against his will Who is the Muhammadan will answer me let us make this question more clear Is Allah word Corrupted By his will Or against his will Who is the hero want to answer? Anyone? Anyone have an idea? I hope the Christians are taking notes. Just to show you how embarrassing this cult is. Is Allah words corrupted? By his will or against his will? Who is the Muslim want to give me the answer? Any Muslim? Thank you. A Muslim saying to us, everything happened is by the will of Allah. Guys, did you see it? Everything happened is by the will of Allah. So who is the one who corrupted the book? I mean, the word corrupt there is coming wrong. Very funny. Let me fix it. Hold on. <clears throat> My screen freeze. Okay, let's take it off. Okay, so the corruption happened by the will of Allah. Oops, I'm typing in Arabic again. Hold on. Very slow. By the. Uh, uh, 
Oh boy. All right. Look like there's a delay in typing for some reason in this software. All right. So Allah will is the reason for the Bible to be corrupted. So what's my problem? <laughs> and who and who is the shaitan? And who is the evil? If the Bible is corrupted by the will of Allah, that's mean whoever corrupted the Bible was doing the will of Allah. Are we following? Whoever that person who corrupted the Bible, he was doing the will of Allah. So he's a good person. Because this is Allah. Well, do you understand? Do you understand me, people? Let us say I am the one who did that. But as long as this is the will of Allah, that's mean I'm doing what Allah he ordered me to do. So the one who corrupted the, the, the Torah and the Bible according to Islam understanding according to their logic is Allah. So Allah is the devil. Allah should go to hell. Allah is shaitan. Disgusting. Shame on you. So this is how silly the logic of this cult. How silly it can be more than this. Allah, he sent the book and Allah, he wanted his book to be corrupted, brother. Why Allah want to do that? Isn't it enough that he sent shaitan to us? <laughs> you know what I mean? Isn't it him who sent the shaitan? Isn't it enough he sent shaitan? So every step of those steps, Islam is destroyed. How many times we need to destroy Islam today? It's enough. But we are not done. Uh, here we go. Husni is trying to change the topic. You see, when a, when a, when a Muslim get hurt, he right away try to change the topic. Do you see what they do? You don't want to talk about our topic no more. So are you saying that God, he sent his son? Look. Look what we are talking about and look what he's talking about now because now he is hurt we got Allah busted Allah is the one who corrupted his book <laughs> are you saying that to me that God he sent himself to save his <laughs> are what a, what a comedy what a drama and not only that if we go in the Quran and even in the hadith, we find that any sin we do in our life is the will of Allah. Is that right? Read with me carefully. Let us say I, uh, I'm, I'm going to do uh, tomorrow, I'm going to commit adultery. All right? Look what Muhammad he said. It's not you who choose to do adultery. It's Allah. Allah, he wrote for every human how much adultery he will do. This is not about Allah knowing. It's about necessity of doing. It's a portion which Allah, he wrote for you to indulge. Read carefully. And this is Sahih Hadith. So they can say it's weak, da'if, right? the garbage they say. Verily Allah has fixed the very portion of adultery which a man will indulge in and which he of necessity must commit do you see it said necessity must commit that's mean you're good you're bad doesn't matter you believe you don't believe it doesn't matter you have to commit sin as Allah he decides for you so which one is uh, which sin is not written by Allah all of them are written by Allah so you commit adultery, Allah, he made you commit adultery. You kill somebody, Allah made you kill somebody. You rape a woman, Allah made you rape that woman. You, you commit theft, Allah made you do theft. You disobey Allah, Allah make you disobey Allah. You corrupt the Bible, Allah make you corrupt the Bible. So who is the devil? And why this, why this person is going to be punished for the adultery he did? Any Muslim can tell me? 
Do we have any Muhammad in here have an answer? If Allah is the one who decides for me adultery, which I must do, so why I will be punished for it? So what we are talking about, we are talking about a collection of illogical logic. Do you see what Islam is? Islam is a collection of illogical logic. Stupid logic. So Allah will punish us for not choosing Islam, but Allah is the one who made us not to choose Islam. <laughs> huh? You won't be punished for it? Uh, isn't it your prophet? He says and the Quran says the one who commit adultery whip his back to uh, 100 time. What are you talking about? <laughs> this is in the Quran and in the hadith Muhammad he says actually uh, uh, as long as we are talking about the Quran being preserved my friend uh, you remind me of a hadith which is very important uh, because we are talking about adultery right if you remember there was a verse in the Quran about a stone into death right which eaten by the goat so uh, it says here the hadith and this is sahih hadith the verse of stoning and breastfeeding which is very sadly is gone i like breastfeeding you know uh, i want to be a baby again uh, the verse of stoning and breastfeeding for an adult breastfeeding for an adult so not for a baby even now i can do it mashallah mashallah what an open-minded religion. Allah is hippie. Allah is a hippie God. Muhammad teaching people, teaching Muslim women, you can give your boobs to a strange man. You cannot shake hands with Muslim women, but you can suck their nipples. That's so beautiful. So Allah sent verses, and those verses as Aisha is saying, not me. Don't tell me it's me who said that. The verses of stoning, of what? Stoning. So there was verses of stoning in the Quran. Yes, brother. Where are they? Aren't you Muslim giving us headache about uh, Quran preserved, Quran preserved, Quran preserved? Okay, where it is? They will say to you, it's abrogated by recitation. What do you mean? What? What is this? Is that a new art? Why Allah want you to forget the recitation if you have to practice the recitation? How you can practice the law? Yet Allah He delete the law. Have you ever heard of a king? He make a law and then he said to them, you have to practice the law, okay? He say, okay, sir. And then he say, okay, give me the law. Okay, we give it to you. From now on, from now on, nobody recite this law. Okay, so how we can practice it? This is what they say to you. They say this is abrogated by, by uh, recitation. Why is that? Simply, the goat ate it. Who can recite for us the verses of a breastfeeding for adult? Anyone? Who can recite for us the verses which is eaten by the goat, which about adultery, uh, uh, for, uh, sorry, breastfeeding for adult? I call it the yummy yummy verse. Anyone? Who knows the verse? And look, not only that, the hadith says that the verses of 10 time adult breastfeeding, it's 10 time, which means the Muslim he have to do breastfeeding, Muslim women, she have to do 10 time breastfeeding for adult, not only once. And that's for what purpose? Just for the purpose so she can sit with a strange man, imagine. If I go in the airport now in Saudi Arabia and there's a woman, she work there in the police, she have to give me, give me her breast and then I can uh, talk to her. And you have to do it 10 times in 10 different days until you are satisfied. Not only like mm, 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 done, no. You have to suckle mm, 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 until you cannot take it no more. And then you come the second day. And you do the same. And then the third day. And then the fourth day. And then the fifth day until it is 10 time. And then you can sit with the women and have coffee. Now the, the hadith here says that the verse of 10 time breastfeeding was abrogated by what? Look, look, look. These verses were abrogated in recitation, but not ruling. And then other hadith established the number of 
uh, four stage. What four stage? This is a guy. This is a man. Or to be five. Okay, where we can. <laughs> so we have now another standard of corruption. Not only Quran is not the only book which Muslims they have to obey. They have other book. It's called Hadith. And if we ask them about the Hadith, they say this Hadith is da'if. This Hadith is weak. This Hadith is rejected as they, as they wish. So what is the preservation of Islam? As long as Islam is not based on the Quran. So look what we discover in one story. That the Quran is not preserved. Even a goat, she did eat the Quran. And Allah could not stop the goat. And a hadith written by somebody came 300, 400 years after Muhammad can destroy the Quran and can abrogate the Quran. So how we can accept this religion? <coughs> All right. So where is the where is Islam? There's no Islam. That's it. It's gone. Now we are not done. Are we done? No, we are not. But let us remember things one by one. The first thing when a Muslim he speak to us about the Bible corruption, don't defend the Bible. He's not talking about your book. Are we clear? Are we clear, people? A Muslim, when he talk about the Bible, he is talking about his book. Because Muslim, they claim that Allah is the one who sent the Bible. So why you want to defend such a thing? The guy is accusing his God that his book is corrupted. What's your business? Say to him, I agree with you. The book of Allah is corrupted. You will see in a second the Muslim Abdul, his face turned upside down. He will say to you, no, 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 no. I'm not talking about the book of Allah. No, you are talking about the book of Allah. Is it this is the book which is sent by Allah? He say yes. Okay, so you are saying to me the book of Allah is corrupted. What's my business? The debate is over. The debate is over. And look at the corruption of the translation. Islam have suffered from many corruption. Look what I'm reading right now. He has revealed into thee the scriptures, which uh, which the truth, confirming which was revealed before it. Who is the Muslim who speak Arabic? Can you show me where it says was revealed before it in Arabic? Who want to show me that? You see how they lie to you? It says in Arabic, "Nazala alayka al-kitab bil-haq musaddiqan lima bayna yadayhi." What lima bayna yadayhi mean? To what is between his hands? Look how the translation took off. Very important sentence. It says, "To what is between his hands?" And the word "hands" in the translation is totally disappeared. Anyone see the word "hands" here? What happened to it? It says between his hands. It doesn't say confirming what was revealed before it. Let us change the translation. This is just to show you another standard of fabrication, which is Islamic translation. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. He has revealed this book to you, sitting for the truth, confirming the earlier books. Okay, hold on, hold on. This translator is a little bit more honest than the previous translation. But look what happened now. The Quran confirmed our Bible. But this is still, this is not enough because the verse doesn't say that. The verse says, confirming what is between his hands, which is the Torah and the gospel as we see. So why they are insisting to take that sentence off? Let us continue. Change the translator. Different Muslim translator confirming what came before it. Like, what happened here? They insist to say what came before it because we have to take it off. Let us see this guy, the Dudi, but the daddy confirming that watch sent before it. It doesn't say that. Not a single Muslim translation is honest. That is one of the biggest problems of Islam dishonesty. Reveal to Muhammad the scriptures confirming that which was revealed before. Where is in that? You know what? I will do something. I will do a trick. Can I do a trick? Who like me to do a trick? 
just to show you how they lie. Let us do this. I am going to ask Mr. Prophet Google peace upon him to translate for us the verse automatically. So now we will have two translation, one done by the Muslims, Abdul, and one done by Prophet Google. Let us, let us see which one of them is more honest. What do you think? Here we go. This is the same page, the same translator. Hmm? Or what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, click Google translation. Let us do here in front of you. Huh? Let us see if the word between his hands will appear or not. Hmm. Translate to English. Look at this. Look at this. Look like Google translation is one billion time more honest than any Muslim translation. You believe it? Does it say here between his hands? Look, it says what was in his hands. This is this is, this is Google translation. <laughs> Hand of who? Muhammad. So Muhammad, he should have the Torah, the correct Torah at that time. He should have the correct gospel at that time. So how the Torah and the gospel is corrupted? Not only that, do you know that Muhammad, he did recite. And he said, I believe in thee and the one who sent thee. Who are they those? Let us see. What Muhammad is talking about. This is Muhammad asking the Jews to bring the Torah. He put his hand on the Torah. Read carefully. He said to them, bring the Torah for me. It was then brought and he then would draw the cushion from beneath him. And look how hypocrite he is. He placed the Torah on its saying. Look how much respect he is shown to the Torah. At that moment, Muhammad is still not strong. So he's being hypocrite to the Jews. I believed in thee and in him who revealed thee. Was the Torah corrupt at that time? If the answer yes, then Muhammad is a hypocrite liar. Because anyone who swear by a corrupt book, he must be corrupt. Do we agree, guys? Do we agree? If the Torah at that time was corrupt and Muhammad is swearing by the corrupt Torah, that's mean Muhammad is a corrupt man. Only false people agree and say, I believe in false thing. If this book is false, how you say I believe in you? How you say that? Unless he is a hypocrite and he's a fraud. If you ask me to take an oath on the Quran, I will never do that unless I'm a liar. I reject the Quran. I don't accept the Quran. So I'm going to say I swear by the Quran. All the evidence saying that Muslims, they have their own agenda. So when they debate us about the Bible, they are not debating us. They are just arguing. They have no logic. Their logic is stupid. And the second they debate us about the Bible, they are debating Allah, for he is the one who corrupted his book, supposedly. And not only that, there is tons of verses saying in the Quran, even with all their fabricated translation, that the Bible is preserved. As an example. Read this verse with me. <clears throat> look at look at this translation it says and when the Quran come to them to the Jews from Allah confirming what is with them do you see it God yeah, do you see it what is even this is in their false translation which i don't accept 
So even in their false translation, in their false book, it says that their prophet and their book confirming what is, not was. So why Muslims don't respect their book? And what is behind this agenda that Allah he sent books but he did not preserve his book? What is the plan of Allah? You see, let me tell you the plan of Allah according to the logic of Islam. What the Christians believe today? That Jesus was crucified. What Islam says, Jesus was not. But what do you have to do with Jesus anyway? Nothing. What do you Muslims have to do with Jesus? First of all, we cannot even find the correct information, a single correct information about Jesus, except that his mother, she was a virgin and her name is Maryam. That's it. The rest is false. In the Quran, they have a guy, his name is Isa. Who is Isa? What Isa mean? They do not know. What Al-Masih no, mean? They don't know. What Musa mean? They don't know. What Abraham mean? They do not know. What Israel mean? They do not know. Because all those names and stories are stolen from others. Muhammad had nothing to do with it. So look what happened. If you go in the Quran, you will find Muhammad, the corrupt prophet, you see, when they say the Bible is corrupted, that is the Quran, my friend. The corrupted Bible is the Quran. And we can prove it in two, in two seconds. When the wife of Imran said, who is Imran? According to Muhammad and the Quran, Imran is the father of Mary. Like what? Like what? What? <laughs> the foolish Muhammad, he thought that Imran or Imran is the same father of Maryam, the sister of Moses and Aaron. So this is why he is giving Jesus a grandfather. His name is Imran. So Muhammad, he could not even copy the name correctly from the Bible about the father of Musa, which is Umram, not Umran, Imram. Wrong pronunciation, wrong name. I mean, have you ever heard of a God? He cannot even say, pronounce a Hebrew word. Umram. How the word Imran became Umran? This is number one mistake. Number two, what Imram or Imran in the Quran have to do with Jesus. Anyone can tell me? <laughs> How this guy became the father of Mary? Anybody can tell me? How this guy became the father of Mary and Moses? I will tell you, Muhammad, he heard from the Jews that Musa have a sister. Her name is Maryam. Hmm? It's a woman of Iran, that wife. <laughs> that's, a, that's a comedy. Yeah, so if I'm wrong, if that is the father of Mary and for sure this is very stupid you can go to the Bible right, right now just type in Google prophet Google who is the father of uh, Mary the mother of Jesus you will find the name is not even close so what happened here Muhammad is confused between the father of Moses Imram and Mary or Maryam, the sister of Moses. You see what happened? Maryam is the exact name 
as it is in the Bible for the sister of Moses. Do you believe it? So we have a book, the Muslim, they claim it's preserved. And this preserved book, making it clear that Maryam, she is the daughter or the grand, the, the, uh, uh, the daughter of Amran, and that will make uh, Isa the grandson of Amran. And Amran is the father of Moses. How that can be? And look here at the stupidity. Mary, she is from different tribe, have nothing to do with the tribe of Moses. Moses is from the house of Levi. What does this have to do with, with Mary? That is Muhammad, my friend. That is Muhammad. A person who claimed to be a prophet of God, he is... He cannot quote a name correctly. He think that Imran, the father of Moses, is the same man who is the father of Miriam. How that can be? So this is why usually I do not debate Muslims about the corruption of the Quran because what the point? The Quran today is a joke. I will go with the Quran, what you have today, and you believe it's not corrupted. And uh, additional to that, I mean, what the point of uh, proving that the corrupt is corrupt? Can you corrupt the corrupted twice? You cannot. Quran is corrupt from the beginning. We can't even call it corrupt. It's a fabricated book. So we cannot say the Quran is corrupted because it's a fabricated from the beginning. Do we have any Muslim want to say something? And this is why you see Muhammad in different uh, phrase in the Quran. He says that uh, Mary, she is the sister of Aaron. You believe it? <laughs> he said that literally. And then the Muslim, they say, oh, uh, the prophet, he correct that. He explained it. He says, well, he meant that in the old days, brother, they used to call them by their great ancestor, but Moses is not from their ancestor. Secondly, the verse making it so clear by misquoting the name of the father. Let us say for the sake of argument, okay, he says, oh, sister of Aaron. And it does not mean sister of Aaron, literally. How the father of Mary, his name became Imran, and it is the same father of Aaron and Moses. Do you know what I mean? How this happened? Yes, the word Quran. Yeah, guys, this this Muslim he's saying. The, are you saying the prophet he cannot pronounce the word correctly? Yes, he could not. There's tons of them. And the, the proof in the front of you. Who is Imran? Okay, show me. You see why the Jews, they will change the name of the father of Moses. From Imran to Imran. Give me, you tell me why. <laughs> Give me a reason. Do they knew that Muhammad will come after, uh, after a thousand of years and he will make the name look funny? Give me a name. Why, 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 why does those people who they are uh, devoted Jews, they will accept to change the name of the father of Moses, and why the Christians will accept to change the name of the father of Mary? I mean, what that have to do with anything? What kind of a prophet he cannot quote the story of Jesus correctly? How Imran became the father of Mary? Somebody tell me. Let us say you are educated. I am not. I want to learn from you. 
how the father of of Mary in the Bible his name became Imran in the Quran anyone knows why does uh, why does Abraham written as Ibrahim in the Christian Christian Bible what do you mean the Christian Bible Ibrahim secondly even your God he say Abraham you are an ignorant my friend you see in the Quran the word Ibrahim written to it written in two ways either Ibrahim or Abraham the most published uh, uh, copy is Ibrahim not Abraham the Muslim they change it but you can go right now and search you yourself as a Muslim search is it true that the Quran mentioned the word Ibrahim and Abraham so if you are saying why it's Ibrahim why Abraham he will go it's in your Quran because Muhammad was not sure from the correct name so you just shot yourself in the foot any Muslim Who is a Muslim would like to give us a call? And you know, if I wanna, if I wanna, let, let's say, uh, I wanna follow a religion. And somebody told me, okay, come and join Islam. Okay, I'm going to join Islam. And look at the logic of this religion. If you bend over five times a day, Allah will give you women. Each one of them, her butt is one mile. I'm really convinced. I'm really convinced. Have you ever heard of a prophet promising me that I will have a wife, her butt is one mile? What I would do with such a butt? Have you ever heard of a prophet? He will promise me I will have sex and I will have orgasm of 70 years. This is religion. This is God. 70 years orgasm. Have you ever heard of a God? He promised you that you will see women in heaven and those women uh, <clears throat> uh, He described what happened inside their private part This is God talking Who is a Muslim agree with this is that God talking? Look what Allah he says to us about if we believe in him what he will give us read with me carefully Who is a Muslim agree with that? <clears throat> this is the true religion The God he described the skin inside the woman private part Do you have more details Allah What exactly else we will find inside? And those women, no man, no genie have boom boom with them. What do you mean, genie? You must then believe that genie stay with women, right? Have you, you know, I want you to believe in this God, brother. Allah is the true God, and the proof is the following Allah, He promised us women with big, big breast. What? This is God? And then you see uh, the dad saying, uh, Do you see the book of the Song of Song? The book of Song, first of all, is not God talking. It's a king making point. Secondly, he was not talking even about women. Here, this is God. And since the Muslim, they heard the dad saying that the Song of Songs is about Muhammad, nobody make fun of the Song of Song no more. Suddenly, the Song of Song became holy. Muhammadim, madam, madam. Didat was making fun of the Song of Song for the, the first 20 years of his life since he started debating Christians. After somebody told him, Do you know that Muhammadim, madam, madam, in the Song of Songs? Suddenly, the Song of Song became about the Prophet Muhammad. You see the hypocrisy? Allah will big me, give me full-breasted women. 
I was worried about that. What is the size, brother? <clears throat> uh, Husni is saying, guys, Husni is saying, Amran, the father of Maryam, is not the same person as the father of Musa. As a prophet. And uh, okay, hold on. So now you agreed. Look, look what this Muslim he did by giving us this answer. Read carefully, just to show you how Muslim they help us to expose this now. Christian Prince, Imran, father of Mary, is not the same person as Imran, the father of Musa. So what he just said, he agreed that the father of Mary and the father of Imran in Islam of, of Musa in Islam both their name is Imran. Did he agree? Did he agree? Okay. Now look what you did. What is the chapter name? The chapter is Al Imran. This chapter is speaking about me who? It's speaking about Musa's and Mary. <laughs> this is why it's called the chapter of Al Imran. You see, it says the family of Imran, not only about a person, not only about Mary. So you just approved to me that Islam is false. You agreed that according to Islam, Muhammad taught you that Imran is the name of the father of Mary. And Imran is the name of the father of Musa. And now your claim is they are different names, different persons. But that will not solve the problem yet. Because the Quran says that Mary, she is the sister of Aaron. And the Quran says that all of them, they are family. Who is a Muslim want to try? Something better. <clears throat> Anyone? Anyone want to try something better? Look at this chapter. <clears throat> Ali Amron. Who is a Muslim would like to call us? Just to show you how Muslims they are hopeless. Allah chose Adam, Nuh, and Noah, and the family of Amron from all mankind. Anyone understand what this verse is saying? Anyone see what the problem? Which family is it choosing to be from all mankind? The rest are names, correct? Individuals. Adam is individual. Noah is individual. And here it says, the family of Ibrahim and the family of Imran. Okay, Musa is from which family? The guy who said to me that Imran... The father of Mary is not the same Imran, the father of Moses. Which Imran we are talking about? Any Muslim? <laughs> you want to guess? What the problem? There is a big problem. First of all, the father of Mary, his name is not Amran. That is a big problem. That is a clear error in the Quran of history. Number two, it's very clear he changed the name because he, because he do not know the name. Why Muhammad he will say Amran if Amran is not really the father of Mary? You tell me. Unless he thought so. 
Why the Christian they will change the name of the father of Mary? What does this have to do with Muhammad? This is a book written 600 years before Muhammad. But because Muhammad, he thought that Maryam, the sister of Aaron, and this is true in the Old Testament, the Bible says that Moses and Aaron, they have a sister. Her name is Maryam, exactly the same as the mother of Jesus in the Quran. So Muhammad here, he proved that he is a fabricator by adopting the same name of the father of Imran, not by choice, but because he thought this is the same Mary, the Maryam, the sister of Aaron. Otherwise, you tell me why Muhammad he got the name wrong. Right? The Bible does not mention the name of Mary father who said that to you Call me and I will make you read the verses by your own eyes and people will laugh at you What do you think? <laughs> now we have more important stuff uh, From this we are just showing you just a little bit of why Islam is a, is a silly when you speak about Quran is the book of a truth. As an example, <clears throat> uh, Umar ibn Khattab. Umar ibn Khattab. He said, that the Quran is written, or let's say the letters of the Quran, is a thousand, thousand, and twenty-five thousand letter. How many? Thousand, thousand. Who is a Muslim listening here? Who is a Muslim is willing to give us a call and explain to us how this has happened? The Quran is more than a million and twenty twenty five thousand letter. How what is the number of the letters of the Quran today? Who is a Muslim can give me the answer? Anyone? So what is left of the Quran? This is more than more than 70 to 80 percent of the Quran is gone. It disappear. Where it goes? One of the hadith of Aisha, let me find it. She said that the chapter of Al Ahzab used to be equal. To the chapter of Al Baqarah. If we go right now and see the chapter of Al Ahzab, <clears throat> how many verses the chapter of Al Ahzab? Read carefully 73. Let us go to Al Baqarah. Look how big this is the biggest chapter in the Quran 286 
286. If we calculate 286 minus 73, 213 verses missing only in one chapter of the Quran according to the wife of the Prophet Aisha. Who wanna call me and I will make him read the hadith right in front of us to everybody? Anyone? Who is a Muslim is willing to read it? <clears throat> Anyone? Where are where is the Muslims? My Skype is open. Let me show you. This is an Islamic website discussing this issue. The website is in Arabic. This is Islam and Jawab. And the guy is asking, fatwa number 197942. What does that mean? I will click Google Translation, peace upon him. I mean, what we can do? Google Translation is the best. Read carefully. The Ahzab was equal to Al-Baqarah. And then the rest is gone. Or they say Nasukhat, which means like abrogated, is gone. But where is gone? What happened? What What, what happened? The Musnad Ahmad, there is a hadith in Musnad Ahmad that 200 verses of Surat al ahzab have been deleted. Is that true? Who is a Muslim want to say is this true or not? Who is a Muslim want to explain to us what's going on? One chapter in the Quran is missing 200 verses, not one, not two, not a three, not four, 200 verses, just one chapter. And this is your website. Anyone have uh, something to say? Anyone have something to say? Where is the what is the protected Quran? Why Muslims you say something to us in front of us, in front of Christians, but in, in front of each other? You say a different story. Why Muslims they don't say, I want to call you and I want to show you that the Quran changed? Why you don't say to, to us what you say to each other? This is what you say to each other. <clears throat> Here it says, how many how many verses you count the chapter of Al-Ahzab? He said 73. He said, well, as I know, it's equal to the cow. It's equal to the chapter of the cow. And this is the hadith number in front of you, Musnad Ahmad. And this is Google's stupid translation. And not only that. They say that this is a Sahih Hadith, the same, clear as the sun. This is Sahih attribution, like, clear like the sun. Do you see it, guys? Do you see what it says? 
Because the Muslim, they will say to you, this is uh, weak, uh, this is naive, uh, this is shish kebab, this is hummus. Not only the scholar saying this is sahih, he is saying it is sahih, clear like the sun. So one hadith proved to us Islam, all of it is gone. The other hadith proved to us that God ate the Quran. The other hadith proved to us that Islam, there's nothing left. What is left? Because you know what they will say to you. They will say, oh, this is, uh, this is weak. Anything we say to the Muslims, it's embarrassing. They say it is weak. <clears throat> Anyone? And here we have to mention another story proving the false prophecy of Muhammad. Look at this. Uh, two Muslims. Once I was debating a Muslim. And the sheikh, he says to me, we memorize the Quran. I said, do you memorize the Quran better than your prophet? He says, no way. I said, why no way? He said, because he's a prophet. I said, no, this is not because the prophet. Because the Quran said, Sonu quru'uka fala tansa. What does that mean? Let us see in the Quran. Chapter 87, verse number 6. It says, Allah, he promised Muhammad that we shall make you recite the Quran and you will not forget it. Guys, does it say that? Does the verse say that? Again, chapter 87, verse number 6, and this is the Muslim translation, not my translation. All right. So if we find that Muhammad forgetting Quran, that's mean Muhammad is a liar. Is that correct? Is that is that, you see how easy it is? If we have evidence that Muhammad himself forgetting the Quran, that's mean the promise of Allah is a shish kebab hummus falafel promise. If God he says to me, I will give you a Quran and you will never forget it, that's it. Nobody can make me forget the Quran, correct? That's God. That's God. He said, Bean is going to be. This is what the Muslim they say. Okay. So this is what the Quran is saying. And look what here we see. The hadith saying, and this is Sahih al-Bukhari. Allah Apostle heard a man reciting the Quran at night and said, May Allah bestow his mercy on him as he has reminded me of such and such verses and such and such surahs I was caused to forget do you see it guys but the Quran says I will give you Quran and you will never forget it Muhammad not only he admit he forgot verses he forgot chapters uh, Noor Noor Khan what's wrong with you Noor are you okay Noor okay why you don't call me Noor take it easy it look like you have a diarrhea my friend no problem we have a solution for it why you don't call me Noor is getting upset he's a flood in the text call me be the man who is the guy who is saying uh, like uh, why why the Muslim they call me names but nobody wanna okay here we go call me and answer me I have in the front of you this is your prophet and this is his wife Aisha the beautiful wife the child saying that Muhammad he forgot Quran and not only he forgot verses he forgot chapters what do you think And this is Sahih al-Bukhari.
uh, uh, Husni is a Shia. The Shia, he's a Shia, he said the following. We Shia believe the Quran is corrupted, but that will not change anything. And I will tell you why you believe the Quran is corrupted, because you Muslims, you have agenda. When, when saying the Quran corrupted will help your agenda, you say that. If that will not help you, you will not say it. You are not believers, you Muslims are not believers. You are agenda people. You have political agenda. When you want, you corrupt the Quran. When you want, you say the Quran is not corrupted. <clears throat> as simple as that. The Shia believe that the correct Quran is taken by Al-Mahdi when he disappear in the in the cave, which cave nobody knows. And he took it from Fatima. The only one have the correct Quran is Fatima. The Muslim Sunni Quran is not correct. This is what the Shia believe. But I don't care what Shia says. I don't care what Sunni says. I care that the Quran is a stupid book. Obviously, Allah says to Muhammad, "I will make you read the Quran, and you will never forget." And Muhammad forget the Quran, as you see in front of you. The rest is not important for me. <clears throat> okay, let's see. We have a Muslim, supposedly. <coughs> let us hope that he is an immature person, not a kid. Answer, my friend. Hello? Hello? Yes, Mr. Dean, you are live on air. What do you like to say to us, my friend? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as Um, I was just watching. Um, and, you know, it's impressive how much you know about this um, um, but I was curious, the title was the Quran or the Bible, where is the truth? The, the title of the stream, I want to know where, uh, how do you know the Bible is the truth? Well, this is a question maybe you should ask yourself first. I mean, how do you know the Quran is the truth? You are a Muslim, right? Um, questioning Muslim. Not okay. Uh, well, my friend, when I say uh, the truth, first of all, do you believe that God he is a good God or he's a bad God? He's good. Okay. So the good God, he, is he going to teach you to do bad? No. Okay. Does the Quran teach you that you can rent a woman? It's called temporary marriage. Uh, muta. Yeah, the muta. Um, it does. Okay. Um, so how God, how God mm -hmm. is the good God. When mm -hmm. we say the good God, this means he teach me good ethic, correct? Yes. Okay. Do you think, with my respect to you and your family, I'm not. I'm not saying something to insult you. Please mm -hmm. forgive me. Mm -hmm. I don't mean that. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that if your sister, with my respect to your sister, again, let us say this is my sister, not your sister, mm -hmm. so so you not be offended. Let us say I'm a Muslim, and my sister, she came to me and said she want to rent herself and to do to do muta. What mm -hmm. I will say to her? She will say to me, "This is what Allah said." Mm -hmm. Now. I, I don't see anything wrong with that. Why is that? If it's con if it's if it's consensual, if they both agree, yeah, but, and but, there's a there's payment, and they agree on what's going to be paid, and they go and do it. I don't see anything wrong with it. Okay, but isn't it so? You you don't have a problem if your sister came to you and says mm -hmm. there's a guy he offered me ten dollars to sleep with me for two hours, mm -hmm. as long both of them they agree, it's fine for you, correct? Correct. Okay, but isn't it this is what prostitution is about? Yes. So you don't have your problem that God teaching me to do prostitution? No, no problem. Why is that? What is your logic? My logic is that if if that's what she wants to do, and if it's not if it's not rape or it's not um, forced on her, if it's consensual and there's a agreement and she wants to do it, then. Yeah, That's but fine. okay, okay. So why the why Muhammad he says if somebody commit adultery, beat mm -hmm. him. What is the difference between adultery 
at least adultery let us say a man and a woman they see each other maybe they love each other and they have sex they commit that sin so why if you and a woman she agree with payment it's okay but the mm -hmm. women who don't take off her panty for money she will be punished what a different both of them are not married mm. um yeah that's a good point um, okay mm. let me so let me i'm not going to choose for you bad points about islam but obviously this is not an ethical because mm -hmm. if we spread prostitution then even married men they will practice that so what why, why we get married if i'm going to sleep around with women additional mm -hmm. to my wife any woman she offer herself i go in the elevator a woman she says take me for five dollars i do it okay so what kind of society we will have right You're right yeah okay now mm -hmm. if i am a person who is going to believe in allah mm -hmm. and what allah is expecting from me and what I am expecting from Allah, can you help me in that? What Allah expect from you to do and what, what you expect Allah to do for you? Allah expects you to pray, hmm. um, you know, and to follow his orders. To pray to and, whom? Uh, you, you pray to Allah. Okay, did, did the Prophet order you to pray uh, for Muhammad? Um, He's, I mean, you, it's, he, you're not praying to Muhammad. He's part of the prayer, yeah. but he's not. He's not. You, the, yeah, you are praying for Muhammad, but not to him. I understand, correct? Right. Okay. So, mm -hmm. why you need to pray for Muhammad? Um, because he is the one who sent the message. Okay. Uh, but isn't it? Do Muhammad need your prayer? Is it? Did Allah bless Muhammad already? Is Muhammad no, going so to heaven? No. You know, you're not praying. I don't know what you mean for Muhammad or to Muhammad. I don't know where all this is. At the end of the day, it's praying to Allah. Okay. Um, you speak Arabic, right? The not classical, the slang Arabic. Okay, I will read and you help me if I am, if, if you don't understand. In Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuhalladina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Mm -hmm. Allah and the angels are praying on Muhammad. Allah, he prayed to Muhammad, but he, uh, on Muhammad, actually. He prayed on Muhammad. Now, but Allah, he prayed for who or to who? Sallu ala, when you say sallu ala, yeah. it's not really, that's not prayer in the sense of, you know. What is this? Yeah, that's the importance when when you say ala, it's more blessings on not okay but hold on actual. hold on if this is a blessing why we are using the word yusalli you speak arabic the word yusalli is salat the word the blessing is, is baraka i mean arabic language is very rich it's very easy to choose words so when i say salah is salah when i say baraka is baraka and when, and when you say you're saluna ala, you can also. Um, okay, I will go with you. So, mm -hmm. according to your uh, uh, what you said, that mm -hmm. Allah and the angels are doing a blessing on Muhammad. Um. Yeah. Okay, Definitely. I will yeah. go with you. So, mm -hmm. if Allah already blessed Muhammad, what the angels can do more? Where is the blessing coming from? Is the blessing coming from the angels, from me, from you, or from God? Um, the blessings, I mean, at, at the end of the day, if Allah wants the blessings, it'll happen. That's it. So if mm -hmm. Allah blessed Muhammad already, huh? Mm -hmm. why I need yeah. the angels and the believers to bless me? Uh, Allah, he blessed me. I'm blessed. That's it. The rest, they are, they are, they are just numbers. They mean nothing. <laughs> Hmm. Maybe it's a message in that the angels also. Uh, okay, let me make it more simple for you, my friend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, let us make a circle here. I will make a circle, and mm -hmm. this is Muhammad in the middle. All right, mm -hmm. we will put Muhammad in the middle, and now we have Allah. This is Muhammad here. Now Allah 
is sending a blessing. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So let us say here we will type the word Allah. We will we will make it letter A ah, actually A. This is Allah. All right. And this is the angel. We will make it A2. And this is the Muslims. We will use the letter M. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So, who is left? The whole universe now is busy doing one thing. Muhammad became the center of the universe. And Allah, the God, supposedly, he have nothing to do except send in a blessing and stop. Because in Arabic it says, Yusallun. It is a continuous verb. You agree? Yeah. Okay. Allah praying or blessing, as you said, and then mm -hmm. the angels sending blessing to, as you said, and the Muslims sending blessing, as you said. The whole universe is busy just doing one thing, praying to that dot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what Muhammad did, he reversed the God from him being the prophet for being the God. So now Allah is exist to do one thing. He is praying for Muhammad. Angels are exist for one thing, praying for Muhammad. Human mankind, they are exist for one thing, to pray for Muhammad. So who is this man, Muhammad? Um, yeah, I see. I see what you're saying. Um, now yeah it, it seems like now what is okay so obviously i don't there's a little there's some confusion what do you know what the tafsir says for this or my friend doesn't uh, matter maybe, it says as you said you know allah he pray on the prophet uh, and etc and he sent his uh, his uh, uh, his contribution for him and he uh, he glorify him you know etc but this is very silly because it should be the opposite it should be the prophet and the angels and the believers praying to Allah. Not Allah and the angels and the believers praying to Muhammad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Okay. Let us I will show you one more thing. Okay. But it has a connection with this what we showed you now. Mm -hmm. If you have a fight and you have two wives, mm -hmm. who's going to help you in the fight? How many people you need to take your side? If you have a fight, you're, you're let's say you are married, you're, you are married to two to women. You know, do you need an army? Do you need who who is going to help you? Uh, I don't know. This is between you and your wives. This is something personal. You do not need anyone, right? Aren't you man enough? Correct. <laughs> I'm no, no, I'm not married. No. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, isn't it the man okay. is enough to? Isn't it the Quran chapter 4 verse 34? It says, mm -hmm. al -nisa. The men are in charge of the women. So yes. if a man have a, have a fight with his wife, he is the one should deal with it, right? Not somebody else, correct? Yeah. Okay, read with me this. Muhammad, let us choose different translation just to make it more simple. Because this guy, he had too much spice. Here we go. Muhammad, he have a fight with two of his wives. Hafsa. And uh, 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 Hafsa and Zainab, I think. So uh, the Quran making uh, making a, a story about it that if those two women you don't repent, mm -hmm. who is going to take the side of the Prophet? Because two of them they are against the Prophet. Look how many. If, if you don't turn into repentance to him, to him mm -hmm. who Allah, right. your heart are indeed inclined, which means you became a kafir. Mm -hmm. Look who is going to take the side uh, of Muhammad in this fight with two women. But and if you, if, you, if you back up each other against him, him who mm -hmm. Muhammad, truly Allah, uh, is his a protector? Mm. Okay, is that enough? No. And Jibreel, what? What Jibreel have to do with this? 
What Allah have to do with this? I mean, the guy, he have a fight with his two wives. Why Allah is, this guy is talking like, is, if the Roman, they are sending him a letter, says we will have a war with him. I say, I understand. This guy is going to face an army. He need God to, 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 to help him. Muhammad is fighting with two women. They are five foot tall. Truly Allah is his protector. And Jibreel and every righteous one among the believer. And furthermore, all the angels. Do you see what happened here? Yeah, I see. What's the verse number of this? This is a chapter 66, verse number four. Okay, yeah, so, I see. Okay. so what happened here, uh, uh, my friend? Listen, what be careful the same as what happened before. We have Muhammad, <clears throat> we will make another circle, and we have Muhammad in the middle. Muhammad now needs protection from two women. So, who is involved with this fight? Muhammad, he got the following names. Jibreel. We will call him J. Mm -hmm. And Allah, we will call him A. Mm -hmm. And Muslims, we will call them M. And all the angels in the world. Who is left? Yeah. What is this? Yeah, this guy, he became the center of the universe. Look like this universe have nothing to do with except Muhammad and his two wives. God, okay. who created the universe, he have nothing to do except supporting Muhammad in his fight with his two women. Not only that, and Jibreel, he will come in a special mission. He will take side with me. Jibreel, I'm with you. You know, Jibreel, please mm -hmm. protect me from those two women. Jibreel have 600 wings. Extremely huge angel, according to Muhammad, to the point he covered the horizon. Is that enough? No. And every single believer, Al Qaeda, ISIS, Mujahideen from everywhere, Pakistan, uh, uh, Indonesia, you name it. And not enough. And furthermore, all the angels, all of this to support a guy in his fight with two women. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe he's, uh, Allah is trying to. He's sending a message. My friend, the message is uh, no problem. Uh, he can say to them, obviously, you see, look, Muhammad, what he's doing. Muhammad, he is here taking advantage of God. Anytime he needs something, he used God's name to control them. He could not control them no more. So he told them, Allah is against you. But look what he did by making it the way he did it. He make it too much exaggeration. It's, it's e obvious it is a lie. Because he can, he can say, Allah said you have to repent and that's it mm. right we do not need the rest and if you go against him Allah is his supporter Jibreel is his supporter the believer is his supporters and the angels are going to be in his back what is this is about are we going to the is that is that the the, the end of the the, the the time is that a judgment day where two armies are huge are going to destroy it's two women yeah. So what's your point? I don't know. So my, friend, saying, my point is that yeah. Muhammad, he is the center of Islam and the rest is just character, like in the stage, you know, you put the well, decoration. He, he's obviously very important. No, no, no. Not obviously he's important. He is God. He is the God. Everything serve him. God, he serve him. Allah, he serve him. Jibreel serve him. The believer serve him. Everything exists is for him. Mm, but not everything in the Quran is benefit benefits the Prophet. What do you mean? Did Muhammad he make verses saying any Muslim woman she can give herself to the Prophet so he can do boom boom with her? Um, I don't 
That's in the Quran or the Hadith? Yeah, this is in the Quran. Mm. Chapter 33, verse number 50. Any woman, she offer herself to the Prophet, and this is only a privilege to thee. Why Allah will make a special privilege for boom boom privilege? Muhammad already have 13 wives, thousands of sex slaves. Why he need to say that Allah said to me, it is lawful for you, the following women. Look how many counting here. I mean, this, you get dizzy. Oh, 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 Prophet, we made lawful for you, the, the wives. Well, thank you for telling me. I'm sleeping with them since the last century. I mean, this is silly, actually, to say to me that. Imagine I'm sleeping with those women since the last century, and now you say to me, I made it lawful for you, your wives. Or They are already his wives. What, what are you talking about? Is, don't you think it's too late? And whom has paid their door? And those who your right hand possess, which means the slaves you own, anyone you slave you own, you can jump on her. And the prisoner of war, and any and, and uh, uh, whom Allah assigned to thee, it's Allah assigned to you. This is assigned of Allah to take off their panty. And the daughter of your uncle, and the daughter of the partner uncle, and the daughter of your mother, uh, auntie, and the daughter of the brother, brother, and the daughter of the daughter, the daughter, and any believing women, she offer herself to the Prophet. And look what they say in Arabic, in English here. And any believing women, who dictate her soul? Her soul. Mm. I thought uh, I thought people dictate their soul to God. Wait, where is this? Yeah, so, it's one um, for you. Uh, where is the soul? Yeah. It says there in English. Oh, okay, see, okay, okay. Dedicates her soul to the Prophet. The Prophet was to God. He was done for believing, not for the believers. Mm. It's a privilege only. This is all is a privilege only to Muhammad. So do you see how mm -hmm. he, he used God? So he can make his own privilege and most of them they are about sex and money. Mm -hmm. What what does this have to do with God, uh, my friend? What do you think? What does this have to do with God? Why God he is saying any woman she can give herself to the Prophet? I mean, uh, you told me that it's okay for you to do muta. Okay. Now, no. what this is about? A woman, she is giving herself as a gift to a man to sleep with him. And this is not for everybody. That's just Muhammad. Why Allah is so much concerned about the happiness of the private part of Muhammad? What is the messenger? So if I'm a messenger, that, that involves my, my private part? Um, so now I'm if I am a messenger, if I'm a messenger, I just say I'm Muhammad now. And there's like a million women watching me. I say, hey, women, send me a message. Who want to sleep with me? Who want to give herself to me? My name is Muhammad. Is that what you're saying? So because I'm a messenger, I can sleep with all those women. What does that mean? What does it have to do with God? Is Muhammad is a servant of God or is he a servant? He's a private part. He's a servant of God. Okay, so what does it have to do with him? This Why Allah? Allah? Do you know, do you know what we say uh, when you say uh, Allah is God? What does that mean? Imagine all those galaxies. You know how huge, massive the, the universe yeah. is? So yeah. imagine we are not even a dust. And the yeah. God who created all of this, he is writing a verse about women taking off her panty to Muhammad. Don't you find that this is something very fishy? I do, yeah. But but in the same way, I find it like if you if you talk about the Bible and you start talking about how god cares that we you know mix fabrics or we care with these little things it's the same thing with all all no, any of the books you're talking no, about no 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 the bible, bible does, that, does not have a stop like that you know let, let me explain well, to you what you're talking don't about eat, uh, whatever, don't eat whatever no this is no this is no this is the law of surviving this is not, a, not this is not the law which is god gave to moses god gave moses the ten commandment and then moses he is the leader of his nation so in order to survive, he gave them orders to follow. He's a king and he is a prophet in the same time. So don't get too close to the camp if you want to do poo-poo. But this has nothing to do with God. You know, this is about hygiene and how to preserve yourself. Because you do, I, I think I lost him. So when 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 Musa, he, he gave those uh, command, it was to preserve his nation from being sick and ill and etc. Mm -hmm. But this is not God that's talking about those things. So... Here we have a prophet who is subjugated. And okay, why Moses did not make a verse says any woman she want to give herself to Moses? Here we go. Moses is a prophet. 
Why Isa did not do the same? Why Abraham did not make the same? Why any of them did not make the same as Muhammad? Why Muhammad is unique when it's come to sex and money? I mean, maybe they did because they have their, their words. No, show me where. Thinking. Neither in the Bible, uh, neither uh, in the Quran it says that. Uh, the only story uh, in the Quran showing it's about David. And David in the Bible is condemned by God. David in the mm -hmm. Bible, the Bible accused David to be a criminal. His hand is full of blood. While in the Quran, you know, the story is there is, is amazing. So why uh, this man is subjugating God for his benefit? Yeah, see, I, I, uh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Uh, but there's, uh, you know, it's maybe, I mean, it's, it's in there for a reason. You know, it's, uh, and it obviously a lot of people believe, so that's, right. uh, I just have to read, I have to read into it more. I gotta wait to see what I gotta, hmm. uh, you know. In chapter 36, verse number 21, it says, Obey those who ask no reward for themselves. Do you see it? Um, I follow those who do not ask of you payment and mail by the... Um, yeah, I see it, yeah. Okay, so we should not follow yeah. Muhammad then. <laughs> there are verses in the Quran about money. Muhammad, he take the best of the booty. Safi al Maghram. Muhammad, he take the fifth of the booty. The best of the women. Muhammad, he made himself above all mankind, any woman she can offer herself. Muhammad, he can marry a woman without even paying her, which means without even marriage. He just take her to bed. So the Quran itself, contradicting the Quran, the Quran says, and by the way, those verses is about the disciple of Jesus. This is a chapter 36, verse number 21. Three messengers mm -hmm. were sent by Isa, supposedly the Messiah, and one of them is Paul, and the second is John, and the third is Peter. So those three, they said, to those who they are speaking to them, obey those who ask no reward of you for themselves. So this is the, the guideline. If somebody is decent, he will not ask for a reward for his own benefit. Do you agree with this logic? This is a good ethic, right? Yeah. Okay. So why Muhammad is not following this ethic? Well, so what, you mean he never? What would he ask for money? My friend, the Quran says that fifth, the fifth of the of the booty is for Muhammad. Al Khumsu Lillahi wa Rasule. You never heard of that before? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, yeah, I have it. Okay. You haven't or you have? I have, I have, I have. Okay, have. so the fifth of the booty and the best of the, uh, 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 the best of the booty and verses about any woman she want to give herself to the Prophet. So why Muhammad is not following the guideline? Did you hear me? Hello? <clears throat> Hello? Um, yeah, uh, uh, you're, you're, you're coming out a little bit. Right. Uh, this is a chapter 8, verse number 41. It says, uh, it says that Allah, he says, yeah, Allah, he says in chapter hello? 8, verse number 41, and know whatever of your war booty that you may gain verily one fifth Hello. is assigned Hello. to Allah and the messenger Hello. right and this is a theft anyway yeah so what so how how we can make two verses work one saying that to follow yeah, he have a bad connection. You can tell. Maybe he's in the Middle East or something like that. So, obey those who ask no reward for you. Right? And this is what even Paul, he was saying. Like, they accuse him of lying. He says, if my lies is to glorify God, 
what what law I am doing, right? I'm not asking for any reward for myself. This is from the Bible, actually. Muhammad is copying it. If we go to the interpretation, we will find that this is about Paul and Peter and John. So ask not or follow not those who ask you for reward. But Muhammad did not follow this verse. Muhammad did the opposite. No, he's an Arab. He's not an Indian. How is an Arab Indian? You're funny. Call me back, my friend. So how this book can be the book of the truth? This is a book of the truth. Not to mention or forget to mention the stupid stories, flying carpet, mistakes in history, mistake, mis amazing mistakes in science. Have you ever heard of a God? You do not know how the hell is created. How the rain is created. Have you ever heard of a God? You don't remember which one he created first, the stars or the trees? One verse says the trees first and the stars next, and the other verse says the stars first and the trees next. Yeah, I think this guy, he will leave Islam, so let us call him back. <laughs> Yeah, yes, my friend. Go ahead. So, what do you think, my friend? Do you think Muhammad is a as a prophet still? I have a bad phone, bad connection. <clears throat> David, one more time, you say that I will go to block you. You are serious. We are not joking around now. Do you hear me, my friend? Mr. No, Dean? You uh, have a bad connection. It's okay. Obviously, he's listening and he's learning. They will leave Islam very soon, as the rest of them. So where is where is Muhammad and where is the prophecy and where is the prophet? Okay, and you call him a prophet. Where is where is the prophecy? Here we go. This is the Quran. Who want to show me a prophecy in the Quran? Who is a Muslim want to show me a prophecy in this book? Who is a brave Muslim? He is willing to call me and say, "Hey, I'm going to show you a prophecy." Do you remember the chapter? It's called the chapter of the Kafirun, which the Muslims always recite for us. In Arabic, the name of Jesus, there's no Arabic name for Jesus. It is Yeshua, which is the same as Yeshua. This is the Hebrew name. There's no name in Arabic. If you go to a chapter of Al Kafirun, this chapter alone is enough, and the Muslims always they mention to us this chapter, Al Kafirun. They are so excited to say it to us. Look at this. Oh, you kuffar. I worship not that you worship, but those people they worship Allah already. <laughs> those pagans they worship Allah. So what do you mean you don't worship what I worship? Number one, stupid mistake. Nor I worship, you worship what I worship. But they worship Allah and he worship Allah. And I will not worship that which you worship. And look here. What he said. Nor you will worship that which I worship. And you know, anyone knows why this is a disaster? This verse alone? Who knows why this is a disaster? Who remember why? Let us see how many of you is doing his homework. Why this verse is a disaster? Big disaster.
because he said to the pagans who he is one of them too you will never worship his God but all of them later they became Muslims <laughs> You see how you say to them, and you will never worship what I worship. If Muhammad is a prophet, he should say, and you in the future you will see you will worship what I worship. That will make it a prophecy. But Muhammad he said, and you will worship Muhammad he got himself busted What do you mean repeat again Muhammad saying that the the non the Arab who they are not rejecting Islam They will not worship what he worship But later those who he said that to them all and they became Muslims So this was a false prophecy from a false prophet and supposedly the one is talking here is Allah. So there is no way Allah is God, yet he do not know that those people in the future, they will became Muslims. <clears throat> Any Muslim? So those Muslims who come to us, let us let us uh, uh, let us summarize again what we learned today from the beginning. What we learned today, we learned that when a Muslim he come to you, and he come and he say the Bible is corrupted. Don't defend. Don't start quoting verses from the Bible. Yes, Dean. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikum salam. Can you hear me? I hear you. Okay. Yeah. So, my friend, what do you think about Muhammad? Do you still do you think he's a he's a prophet? Um. Now he, he yeah he could he mean he he could still be a prophet. I mean, what you showed me, um, you know, it's possible that Allah just gave him special rules, which is not. Okay. Know, okay. What what make a prophet a prophet? What makes a prophet a prophet? Um, um, prophecies. But like uh, what? Give me a prophecy. Where we have the Quran in front of us. If there's any prophecy in the Quran to make Muhammad a prophet? Do you see the verses we are showing on the screen? The kafirun. Yeah, I see. Okay. If you go and read the interpretation, you will see that those people who Muhammad he said that verse to them, all of them they became Muslims later. So this is a false prophecy how he said to them nor you will worship that which I worship and later all of them became Muslims mm, nor will you worship no not worship that which you have been right worship nor will you worship that which um so he's saying you won't worship which I worship and then maybe maybe they come fake Muslims so they don't right. get killed if I say to you you will mm -hmm. never become a Christian and then after two months and I claim mm -hmm. to be a prophet and then after mm -hmm. two months you became a Christian that's mean I'm a false prophet because a prophecy if if you say something prophesy something it have to be true uh, yeah um. yeah but this is a false prophecy Well, who is he talking to here? No, the people, people, of Quraysh, people, of Quraysh, people of Quraysh, is it right? Uh, the Arab, but all of them, they became Muslims in his time, not after, in uh, his time, during his lifetime. Okay, what a prophecy Muhammad he gave in the Quran? Oh, the baby, they become fake. 
Do you remember Muslims anything? Today, won't get killed. Forget about this one. Do you remember anything Muhammad he said became a prophecy come to be true in the Quran? Um, mm, I will give you one. I will, I will help you. Okay. Have you ever heard the Muslim okay. saying that Muhammad he prophesied that the woman after they lost they will win? He said, yeah, he said that the, the women were defeated, or they were defeated. Okay, uh, this is a chapter, chapter 30. The Roman have been defeated in the close by land, and after a few years, they will defeat. They will be victorious. In Arabic, it says, Bidu Isinin. See, Bidu Isinin. The word Bada is between 3 to 10. Based on the history, that would be wrong yeah. because it took many years after that, more than 16 to 17 years for the Roman to accomplish. However, the Hadith says, and this is what the Muslim they say to us, remember, it's not me. The Hadith says mm -hmm. that Muhammad, he said that verse after the Roman became victorious. Oh. So how this is, can be a prophecy? No, no, this is not a prophecy. Okay. The uh, Roman Empire has been defeated in the length of spark. Hmm. Yeah, no, this is... Give me a second, I will show you the hadith. The last thing. Because Muslims, they keep talking about this verse, they say... Brother, this is amazing how the Prophet, he knew that. First, the calculation is wrong. Secondly, even the Hadith says that we have a problem here. Are you talking from the Middle East? No, I'm in the US. Why you have a very bad connection? I don't know. All right. Let us see. I'm just trying to find you the hadith. Mm -hmm. Some reason is not opening with me. But I will get. Just to show you how Muslims they they say things, it doesn't make sense, and it's not even honest when they say it. Or maybe some of them they say it without no knowledge. You know, many Muslims they speak without knowledge. All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. We found it fine. Mm -hmm. Thank God. Sometimes you want something, it doesn't come. All right. Let us put it in the screen. All right. Um, do you see the screen? Um, I see your books right now. All right. What about now? Uh, no, I still see your books. Um, it's okay. It would take, take a bit of time to come to you. It says here that in the day of Badr, the Roman had mm -hmm. victory over the Persian. So the believer were pleased with that. Then the following verse was revealed. So the claim that this is, was a prophecy Muhammad, he said that verse before it was a lie. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, okay, I, I still can you give me the which hadith it is? I want to uh, this it. is Jami al Turmudi and it is Sahih. It's Sahih? Yeah. Uh -huh. um, so, so the believers were pleased with them, the farmers were ruled, the Flamin, the women have the defeated. And the day of Bala, the women have the defeated. Yeah, okay. I see. Mm. So the verse revealed after the Roman was defeated, not before. So what, what, you know, let me, I will tell you a prophecy. I'm a prophet now. Trump, he will win the election in 2016. <laughs> yeah, this is what Muhammad is saying. I mean, what is the prophecy here? The, the guys, the guys already, they are victorious. So where's the prophecy? And okay, well, I don't, where did he say that they, where, it says, the women have been defeated. Yeah, and uh, and after uh -huh. and after the defeat, they will be victorious. Oh, okay. He said that we were all happy with the victory. Hmm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I don't really. This one I don't hear is the. Like, Forget about this. Did you hear about the Muslim? They say that there is science in the Quran. Oh yeah. Okay. What uh, can you give me? Do you remember anything? Um, <laughs> there's the bang and theology. Choose one. Um, which one? Which one? Give me one, and we will talk about it. Um, the Big Bang. Big Bang. What is the Big Bang? Do you know what the Big Bang is? Yeah, all the all the matter in the world was in one one ball, and then it, thirteen billion years ago it expanded. Hmm. Okay. There is explosion, correct? Correct. It was explosion. Yeah. 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 But you see, the Muslims they quote for us this verse in the Quran saying, "This is about the Big Bang." Don't the believers see that the heaven and the earth were joined together? Okay, does it say here, don't they see? Um, don't they see. What's the verse? What's the verse number? Chapter 21, verse number 30. Um, okay, yeah, I see. Okay. Don't the unbelievers see? Okay, so he's talking about something they can see, correct? Yeah. Okay, did any of us see the Big Bang? Uh, no, but okay. Yara. Didn't they see? Didn't they see? Correct? Didn't they see? How Yara? الذين كفروا أن السماوات والأرض كانتا رتقا ففتقهما فتقناهما. So didn't we? Didn't you see? So Allah is talking about something He can see, not something happened in the past. You know, I mean, something you can witness for it now. I mean, at least we can see how it is now. So what what the Quran is speaking about that the earth and the heaven they used to be together, and Allah He lift up the sky. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think, but I think you're taking it too literally. No, no, he would, no, 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 let us show you that this is what it's meant. You see, I don't say things, uh, you know, I don't know, by now you should know that I don't say things and this, this is how it is according to Islam. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, Allah, he lift up the sky. You know that? Uh, I, I mean, I see it, it says... Well, no, it doesn't say Yeah, this is a different verse. Chapter 13, uh, chapter 13, verse number 2. It says, Allah is He who raised the heaven without pillars that you can see. Do you see it? Uh, yeah, who okay. erected the heavens without so, pillars. So, connect this verse to this verse, you will find that they are saying the same. Whoa, 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 whoa. So connect it. Yeah. yeah, don't the yeah. believers see that the heaven and the earth they used together? Okay, what He did? He lift up the heaven. He erected the heavens, the heavens, the um, He raised 
But this is different. I don't, I don't see the connection. The connection is that the earth and the, the heaven, they used to be connected, correct? In the previous verse. Yeah. This one here is saying, Allah, he raised it up. This is how he split it. Allah, he raised up the heaven. Okay. Okay. So, but let yeah. me ask you, did this, is that true? That, uh, that, uh, that the heaven is raised above us? No. So this is a lie. How God, he says, I think we are... We are not even a dust inside the space, inside the heaven, if we can call it heaven, correct? Correct. So correct. we are the, the heaven is not lifted from us, we are inside it. We are little tiny, 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 it's not even like a size of a needle, the head of a needle, inside yeah. the heaven. So how he lifted up, but because this is how Muhammad he say things, the earth and the heaven, they are not connected. The heaven is up, the earth is down. So the heaven is up, but the, the, the truth is not, uh, not right. The heaven is up, the heaven in the right, the heaven in the left, the heaven underneath of us because the earth is not a flat and there's heaven around us all over. Mm. Yeah, there's no, yeah, that's right. So this is a very false uh, now, statement. Hmm. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's, it's, I think you're taking this too too literally my friend yeah, I, I am not the one mm -hmm. you see you have to read the interpretation of the muslims mm -hmm. okay look at this mm -hmm. allah mm -hmm. he is the one what yeah. the word madda mean yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, 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 okay, but this is mean it's flat correct you know uh, you say the madda is the is the carpet yeah okay so uh, he made the earth a carpet and then he placed in the top of the earth mountains does it say that yeah but wait but is it true that mountains are something placed in the top of the earth or the mountains are coming from the magma um they come from the tectonic plates pushing against each other well there's two ways either it's a yeah. volcano Oh, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. the magma or it is the tectonic place but because of a pressure between them this is correct yeah. but which mean in both way it's not it's, it's coming from inside the earth not something we place in the top of the earth correct correct yeah okay so the Quran here is giving false prophecy well, how about prophesying how god he made the earth he placed mountains firm in the top of the earth i don't but he's not saying I, that's because it, it looks that way i don't it's not literally no my friend this is literally it's about what how god is is speaking about mountains how he created them this is not uh, it's not up to you and you can read the muslim interpretation this is not my interpretation you can read the kathir you can read al mm -hmm. okay you see I, I will take advantage of one thing that's because you, you know all of it you know the hail right al, al the, oh hell yes yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. okay mm -hmm. how the how the hail is created um, cold air. Um, I don't. I don't know exactly. So but. you don't believe that hail is something God he break from mountains in heaven. Break from mountains in heaven. I mean, no. Okay. No. So read with me, because you keep saying to me you are taking it literally, literally. Read with me. Then give me that. Here we go. Alam tara anna Allah yuzji sahaban thumma yu'alifu bainahu. Then he says, Allah is talking how he make the rain. And now he's talking how he make the ice. Okay, where the ice is coming from? You speak Arabic? Yeah. Okay. I... He is he sent them the the hail from mountains in it, you know, because he keeps saying to me you are taking it literally literally Okay, yeah. let me show you what the Islamic scholar says Whatever the Muslim scholar they say I will take it. No problem. Here we go. Just to show you this is what it's meant That's, that's not me saying this and saying that So if we go to the Quran interpretation, which is made by the Muslims not by me We will find the following. Let us see what it says mm. <coughs> Uh, this is a, a chapter 24, verse number 43. 
and we will show we will show it interpretation according to Islamic uh, understanding, not ours. Not we don't do what the Muslims do. Muslims they try to explain the Bible to us the way they like. We don't do that. You know, we show them what what they themselves they see about those verses. Yeah. Okay. Let us see. Uh, verse number forty-three, and here. All right. You heard of the of Ajalain, correct? Yeah. All right. Here we go. This is Ajalain, and this is the official government website of the Kingdom of Jordan. Let us see what it says. And he sent down from the heaven out of the mountains, min jibal, mean extra that there is in in the heaven. Does it say that? Um. Yeah, it says that. Okay. Yeah. So Allah is sending hail from mountains in heaven. How God, he do not know even how hail is made. So, uh, we can change the interpretation. Maybe this guy is wrong. I mean, people make mistakes. Maybe this guy, he have a wrong understanding. Here we go. This is Ibn Abbas, the cousin of your prophet. All right. It says, and then he says, and then he sent down hail from mountains in heaven. Yeah, that's that's not right. Okay, but this is God. Yeah, and God, God is saying to us how hail is made, how rain is made. Hmm. How this can be true? If this is not talking and this is wrong, that's mean Allah cannot be God. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Give me another uh, miracle, scientific miracle. Forget about all of this. As until now, we prove nothing to you. No problem. <laughs> Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. And I have patience. Tell me, uh, give me another one. I'm here. Uh, would you enter the mall? Right. Um, I'm here um, in your service, my friend Dean. Thank you. You welcome. <laughs> um, I mean, I hear there's um, the thing, uh, unique finger, uh, fingerprints. Fingerprints, no problem. But I want to show you today how, my yeah. friend, with my respect to you, you are a Muslim, and I'm not trying to insult you. I don't mean you when I say Muslims, they lie, but they lie. Your brothers in real religion, they lie. You speak Arabic, so how this is can be, I mean, how they can fool you, my friend. Here we go. Uh, yeah. This is about the word Binan. Mm -hmm. Okay, let us see what the verse says. Chapter 75, verse number 4. It says, aren't we able to put together his fingertips. But this is about his bones. The fingertips is the bones. This is not about fingerprints. What a fingerprint? Allah is saying, here we go. Don't don't does the man think we cannot assemble his bones? Mm. No, we can. Even his fingertips we can. Mm. Yeah, that's right. It doesn't say so they lie. You see, it's about bones. They make it about the skin, but they are assuming nobody will go and check, and nobody have a brain to, to to you know people. They take it like you know it's like a fast food McDonald. You know, take sandwich, give sandwich, brothers. Prophet said, Allahu Akbar, Alhamdulillah, MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah. Takbir, takbir. <laughs> yeah, this is this is this is the comedy we see. Nobody when nobody when I use a brain for a second. Yeah, I'm looking through these translations. A lot of them, I'm trying to read the Arabic, and yeah, they, they keep friend, adding stuff. My friend, stuff. Ar and yeah, the Arabic is so clear. <laughs> so he's talking yeah. about, do you think the human can, he think we cannot put his bones together? No, we can, even his bones, because the, the, the fingers, mm -hmm. they are very small. Like, you know, maybe you can uh, put the big bones together, but those are very small with the hands, you know. So this is what it says. And look how they fabricate just to make it look like as a science. So the verses is speaking about, and, and not only that, we can go to the interpretation. Let us go to the interpretation because maybe Christian Prince, he got it wrong. Maybe you get it wrong too. You know, let us yeah. see if there's a fingerprint here. Chapter 75, verse number 4. Mm -hmm. I mean... Those who make those claim, they are official liars. They are liars with certificate of BHD. They have no shame. Here we go. This is yeah. Tafsir Ibn Abbas. Hmm. Is it about bones? 
Mm, yeah, it seems like it. So why are they lying? I don't know. See, I, I hear this stuff from just my parents and uh, okay, yeah, yeah. my friend Dean. Forget about this one, man. Maybe we can find something else. Give me one other one. Give me, hit me. <laughs> <laughs> I will stay with you until they come in here. <laughs> and I guarantee you, every one you give me is going to be busted, and everybody, and including you, you will laugh with me at it. I'm laughing with you now, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, what there's so much. Uh, the embryology, that's the best that's of That's wonderful, one. the embryology. What is that? Which verse do you know? There's many verses. Let me help you. Maybe you are talking about this one where it says, uh, 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 Alaqa, uh, the one about the Alaqa. Is that the one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. but uh, this is a hilarious verse. Thank you for mentioning. Well, now, me and you now, we will we will have heart attack from laughing. Read with me carefully. Yeah, read with me carefully. This is the Quran, and this is what the Muslim translation is, not my translation. It says, <laughs> then we need the nutfa. What is a nutfa, uh, Dean? Um, the the nutfa is this, this the um, um, the is the sperm. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. We made the nutfa into a congealed blood, alaqa, a thick of a congealed blood. Okay, do you agree with that, uh, Dean? Have you ever heard of a scientist says that the baby is made from nutfa, and the nutfa will become a baby, and that how how it happened? The sperm became blood, and then the blood became a lump, and then the lump became a flesh or bones. Mm -hmm. what, is, what is that? In which science is that? Where we can find this science? The, the, the sperm of the man go to the women and fertilize the egg. The one will grow is the egg. It's not the nutfa, correct? Well, yeah, there's the egg. Yeah, yeah the egg, uh, the egg will mm. became the one cell. It's a big cell. The cell became two. The two became three, etc. You know, so mm -hmm. it's not it's not the sperm will became what what this guy is talking about. He's saying that the sperm of the man will became a congealed dead blood. Now, yeah, but it's not it's not wrong. It's wrong, it's just, my friend, it's because the sperm does not uh, transform to be any uh, anything to do with the baby. The sperm activate the egg and deliver the DNA message, and that's it. it dissolve. Um, According to the Quran, what is the first stage? At the first stage, you are a sperm, correct? Mm -hmm. Then yeah. you became a blood. Go and check from now until they come in here and find me where who is the who is the scientist? He was saying. That the first stage is a blood. Um, I mean, there is blood. I find that we have, for sure we have it, but but not the sperm will become a blood. I mean, the no, blood, the blood you will have a blood after you have a system. You should have nerves first. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, so you, you have to have. Uh, I mean, you have to have veins. So like when we have a blood, we have a, we have a, a supply. The blood is a is a is a supply. Correct. And that right. is a, something will provide us with food and oxygen. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay, but here in this in this stage, there's no need for food. I mean, the the food is provided in different way from the womb of the woman. The egg is connected even it, even after you are born, still you are connected to the mother, right? Right. So here he's saying that the the sperm became a congealed blood. Let me show you another verse. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do women have a sperm? Do women have no? Okay. Chapter 86, verse number 6 and 7 says that there's a gaseous fluid, sexual fluid, coming mm -hmm. from the backbone of the man and the ribs of the women. Where do you think the, the sperm of the man is coming from? The sperm of the man is coming from the, the, the testicles. Then. Well, you are very close, but let us go here. According to the Quran, no, the, the 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 sperm of the man is coming from the backbone, and women have a sperm, and it's coming from her ribs. Yeah, I mean, no, 
What? Where, I don't see women here. Where, where do you see men? Women no, the word taraib, the word taraib in Arabic is yeah. the location of the necklace of the women. It is a word that has to do with the ribs of the women and specifically the location of the women necklace. This is what taraib means. Mawqi or qilada. Taraib. Taraib al sadr. هي العظام الرقبة التي تقع فيها القلادة موقع القلادة من الرقبة للمرأة. So it comes from between the backbone of the man and the ribs of the woman. How is that? What kind of God do you think that the sperm is coming from a backbone, which is the last bone in your spine? And women have a sperm coming from her ribs. You know, let us go and see the interpretation. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, so, I have to. Yeah. Well, no problem. Here we go. It, it, this is the chapter 86, verse number 7. Let us go to Ibn Kathir. <laughs> you heard about Ibn Kathir, right? Yeah, he's the big one. Yeah, he used, to be, he used to be in my school. Oh. Here we go. This is Ibn Kathir. Let us see what Ibn Kathir he said. Now, the Muslim, they will say to me, what the Muslim, they will say now, they will say Ibn Kathir is an idiot. They will say, have an mm -hmm. understanding. Yes, they will say that, but just to, just to save Muhammad from being... Uh, exposed, they will say anything. Look at this. This is Ibn Kathir, and he is explaining the verse. Let us see what it says. <clears throat> uh, he is a created from a water gushing forth, meaning sexual fluid that comes out bursting forth from the man and the woman. Does the child produ produce from both of them? Okay, wonderful. Now he continues saying, proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs, Meaning the backbone of the man and the ribs of the woman. Referring, which referring to hairy chest. And here the translation is not accurate. It's not hairy chest. It is the location of the necklace. What do you think? Do you agree that women, she have a sexual fluid which make the baby? And it's coming from her uh, location of the necklace of the chest? Mm, she has... I mean, yes, she has a part in the... It's not the right location, no, it's not from the necklace. The woman have a sperm, my friend? No, no sperm, no. Yeah, but this is what it says. It says the baby, it's a, it says gushing fluid. It's a gushing forth liquid. It's a fluid. Do you see it? Yeah. It's a it. sexual fluid. So this is cannot be the egg because the egg is not sexual fluid. It's not even a fluid. All right? Right, right, yeah. Yeah, and not only that, Muhammad himself, he explained that. That's why Ibn Kathir, he read for us that the Prophet said, let us see what the Prophet said. Uh, there's a hadith where Muhammad said, uh, 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 explain something. Uh, let us see. Where is the hadith? I hope they did not take it off because they do that. The Muslims, they are trying, yeah, they, they do that, actually. There's a hadith where Muhammad, it's in Arabic, I can show it in Arabic. Uh, uh -huh. What happened to the hadith? Okay. Here we go. Actually, this is the hadith. This is the hadith from Muhammad. Proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs, the backbone of the man and the ribs of the woman, and here he takes the explanation from Muhammad. The fluid is yellow and fine in texture. The child will not be born except from both of them, i.e. their sexual fluid. So what Islam teach that the woman, she have a sexual fluid in her private part. That is a sexual fluid, which is the sperm of the woman, which is coming from the location of the necklace in her ribs. Do you agree with that? No. Okay. And do you agree that this sexual fluid, which is yellow and fine in texture, is the one who will make the baby? No. Okay. And the man have a sexual fluid, which is thick and white. And this is what Muhammad, he said in the hadith. Let me show you the hadith so you don't say I'm making things up. This is the hadith of Muhammad saying the following. Where is the hadith coming from? As usual. From the box of the hadith. Here we go. This is your prophet explaining the same thing. And this is Sahih. I came to the prophet. Uh, okay, no, no, this is not the one. Um, here we go. 
Let me show you the Sahih. Here, uh, uh, the hadith saying, Anas ibn Malik reported from Umm Salim, narrated, blah, 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 okay, anyway, then it says, in case that the woman sees that she must take a bath, she sees what? She sees a dream, she has this charge. Mm -hmm. When a man sees sexual dream, and the woman sees sexual, sexual dream, he says, uh, Upon this, she asked him, uh, a woman, she said to him, what I will do if I see, uh, you know, I have orgasm. He said, upon this, he says, the wife of the prophet, he says, does really this happen? Because the wife of the prophet, she never had orgasm. So she looked like Muhammad is not doing a good job in the bedroom. Otherwise, Muhammad, he says, yes, it does happen. Otherwise, how can a child resemble her? Man discharge, i.e. sperm, is a thick, and white and the discharge of the women is thin and yellow do you see it mm -hmm. so the one uh, uh, the one resemble comes from the one who uh, 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 you know his his uh, his orgasm come first in different hadith the translation is more accurate it says the one who comes first he controlled the resemble the look of the baby here we go this is the hadith and this is sahih read it <laughs> Yeah. The messenger of Allah said, "Water, the water, the man water is thick and white, and the women water is thin and yellow. Which of them comes first? That child will resemble the parent." Yeah, that's that. Um, I don't think that's not right. Is the, the hadith is Sahih? Is yeah, that? Sahih. This is very Sahih. Mm. But uh, I mean. Yeah, I don't. Well, you know, right. Dr. Muhammad, he knew best. Come on. We have to admit, me and you. Dr. Muhammad, he now, this is why if I get married, I, because right by the way, I look very ugly. So if I get married now, I know mm -hmm. because I don't want my son to look like me and he will shoot me. Actually, he, he will shoot me immediately after the second he is born. So he look at me like he, he might go back where he came from after he see me. So what? Um, by, by, by the wisdom of the prophet, alhamdulillah, now mm -hmm. I will never have orgasm first. Because I want my son to look like his mother, you know. Actually, he will not like his mother because he, he can't be a son. Because Muhammad here, he mean too. Not only resemble as a look, resemble as a gender. I can show you the other hadith. It says, uh, 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 so if it uh, uh, the one who comes first, uh, uh, if the man come first, the baby will be an uh, 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 a boy. If the women come first, the baby will be a girl. So according to the Majesty Doctor Muhammad, who is getting his knowledge from Allah. The women orgasm mm -hmm. will decide, or the man orgasm will decide who what what the gender of the baby and how it look like. But all of us we know that this is stupid. And look, Muhammad he made it clear. He said the water of the man is thin. Uh, the, the water of the man white and thick. Correct. Yeah. He called them both water. And then the water of the women is a thin and yellow. And which one of them come first? That water will decide. How the baby looked like and his gender but all of us we knew that the the sexual fluid the women she have in her private part if she's having sex this is nothing to do with the baby yeah nothing and i yeah that's and i remember another hadith that says allah actually chooses the gender and then whether they're disbeliever or believer in the womb exactly so i have to yeah, i have here, to look here muhammad he is getting himself busted so you are helping me i'm going to hire you as an assistant now so, because, yeah, because in that hadith it says that Allah, he sent an angel, right? And yeah, then and he, he, he write the destiny. But look, Muhammad in that hadith, you see, I like, there's something I like about your prophet. He cannot keep his mouth shut. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, look, look what he said. Have, uh, uh, do you know how long the, the sperm of the uh, human being can live? Mm, a couple of days. Maybe. Five days. Maybe. Look what Muhammad said, my friend. I mean, your prophet is amazing. Look at this. Uh, uh, your prophet, he said, mm -hmm. he said, not me, remember, don't curse me. When the drop of semen remain in the womb for 40 or 50 days, look, your prophet is very honest. Like he is not sure, like 40, 50, I don't remember what Allah told me, 50 or 40, 40 or 50, 40 or 50. I mean, 
what kind of a prophet this prophet is where he got the number 40 and 50 from and then so you are you stay and by the way it doesn't say uh, yeah it says actually 40 or 50 uh, uh, and 40 or 50 you are the sperm and then the angel come and he says Lord good or evil the guy is a sperm now you are thinking of, so you are a sperm and now Allah is deciding what you will be all right mm, in different yeah. hadith actually Muhammad he said the following which is getting more funny uh, funnier uh, because you are 40 days uh, as a you see here as a drop of semen and then you became a cult of a, bl a, a clot of a blood <laughs> yeah and then yeah. at the end, Allah will decide male or female. Do you see it? Last thing. You see it? I see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Male or female. So the last thing is the gender. According to science, actually, gender is decided right away by the sperm. The sperm, when it go inside the, uh, in the, the inside the egg, fertilize, and that yeah. sperm decide the gender is not what he's saying. According to Muhammad, the last thing is the gender. Uh, here you will see the same. You know. Uh, yeah. Uh, hmm. Look, all those hadith, they are saying the same. Yeah. Uh, Re read this one with me. This one is fantastic. This one we can make movie, me and you, about it. If you have money, we can, uh, you know, we can ask uh, uh, Sylvester Stallone to be the, you know, we make him go back. And we make a cartoon movie like he was a sperm, Sylvester Stallone. And now he go in a mission and he stay as a sperm in the womb of the enemy for 40 days. Look at this. Yeah. In the form of a semen for 40 days. Then became a clinging, a cling, it doesn't say, it says alaqa, a congealed blood. For the similar period, so you are now 40 days as a sperm, and then 40 days as a blood, and then 40 days as a loom of a flesh. And that said, the total is 120 days, the baby is done. Hmm. Well, that's... Um, well, now let's. It's not right. Um, and this is reported by who? Both Al Bukhari and Muslim. Yeah. Now the hadith, uh, it's hadith is. Yeah, I don't, I don't like the hadith too much. You know, when Quran, you, keep... you see, you see we, I showed you the hadith to confirm what it says in the Quran, remember, right? Yeah, I know, I know, yeah. I know. Yeah. So, because I wanted to say, because you said to me, you are taking it literally, etc. So, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm showing know. you. This is what the Muslims understand it, and this is what Muhammad himself, he said. Yeah, Forget no, about this, give me another miracle. Forget about this. But that nothing is working. <laughs> nothing is working, what I can do. Maybe, you never know, you never, maybe this one coming one is going to work. Give me another one, just last one. The last one, one. Try to choose something that can hit me in the head, break my head to pieces. <laughs> um, last note. I mean, um, the, um, the, the the sky being the atmosphere protecting us. That's wonderful, my friend. The Quran says the atmosphere protecting us. From what I yeah, I remember. Me. But can't tell me that, yeah. My friend, you speak Arabic there, you, you should do better. The, the Quran mm -hmm. says the opposite. The Quran says that Allah wa ja'alna sama'a saqfan mahfuda. So, what is protected mm -hmm. is the sky, not the earth. From who? Let us see. And now you mm -hmm. will die laughing with me. Don't die on me. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter 67, verse number 5. And indeed, we have adorned the nearest heaven with lamps. And we have made such a lamp as missiles to drive away shaitan. You see it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we 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 guarded the sky. He got it from what? From shaitan. So it's the opposite. It's not because the atmosphere is something in the space trying to get in the earth, correct? Yeah. Okay. Here is the opposite. Shaitan, he will try to go out of the heaven. Allah, he will show him. Now you might say to me, this is not clear for me. Can you confirm it? Let us confirm it. In different mm -hmm. verse, hmm? mm -hmm. this is all his fairy tales. 
where Muhammad he claimed that shaitan he tried to steal information from Allah I don't know if you know uh, you know about uh, uh, WikiLeak WikiLeak yeah yeah wait, this is Allah shaitan uh, here we go look so uh, and we and we we have said uh, uh, we, we made the sky zodi uh, zo uh, zodiacal signs in heaven and we made them fear seeming all beholder and then and we, and, and we have guarded those in the sky from every cursed devil do you see it uh, we have guarded them from every cursed devil yeah okay. mm -hmm. but but so if any try to gain hearing by steal in, from steal from Allah like he want to spy is it pursued by a flaming fire this is the atmosphere they are talking about. You see how they lie to you? The only that gains a healing by stealth is pursued by a friend. Yeah. This yeah. translation is really weird. Let us change yeah. the translation. Maybe you can get something more simple because this guy, I don't know, sounds like he's taking too much beer. So look, we change the translation here, it became different. And verily in the heaven we have set mention of his stars, and we have beautified it for be for beholder. And we have guarded it from every outcast devil. We have guarded what? The sky. Save him who steals the hearing. And then the other verse, you know, that, that the one connected with this one. If he try to steal, Allah will show him with the star. Do you see it? Yeah. Okay, so what is the atmosphere? Yeah. Uh... And here there's a mistake. You see, the same verse here, they say that this is about the atmosphere, but the verse saying that the stars is located in the nearest heaven. That's mean, no. if this is, uh, but yeah, it says the lamps in the lowest heaven. Yeah, okay, I see. Yeah. The lamps, I see. And the shaitan, he live in the earth. So Allah, he showed the showed shaitan by a star. Do you know how big the star? Yeah, I don't know. This is all his fairy tales for kids. I mean, come on, you are smarter than this. You really believe in this? Shaitan, he will yeah, steal information from Allah. He want to spy. Allah showed him. But so Muhammad trying to explain what was those things we see in the sky, especially he live in the desert, so he can see a lot of it every night. You know, they are living in the dark. There's no electricity. So anytime go outside, you will see the sky dark black. You see nothing. So you look at the sky. He see those stars coming. He think those are shooting stars. He think those are really stars. And Allah showed him this, the, the shaitan, the shaitan trying to spy at Allah, brother. <laughs> boing, boing, like Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah, I see. I see. Yeah. So where is, yeah. where is the, where is the, where is the. Yeah, I don't, I don't see anything. <sighs> see, yeah, I mean, see, the thing is, I don't look in, you know, I, I just kind of hear what people tell me. I don't really look into actually reading the verse, but. I'll have to go back and do some more reading, really try to understand. Yeah, you know your stuff, well, uh, uh, let, 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 let me see. The, 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 sky, the sky, Saqfan Mahfuda, Allah, He made the sky like a canopy in the top of a mountain called Qaf. You know, the, the, do you know Qaf? You heard of Qaf? Mm, no. Okay, did you hear about the chapter that's called Qaf in the Quran? Oh, chapter, yeah, yeah, yeah. Qaf. Okay, oh. Qaf, if you if you if you ask a, a, a scholar, okay, what does Qaf mean? He says this is an azure mountain which is surrounding the earth from all direction. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is. Let us go and see the interpretation. Here we go. From the narration of his authority, Ibn Abbas, this is Tafsir Ibn Abbas, chapter fifty, verse number one. It says the following. That he said the interpretation of Allah saying Qaf. He said Qaf is an azure mountain overlooking this world, and the color of the sky takes from it. Allah swear by it. Do you see it? So uh, what happened is that this is a mountain. It's a blue, and it's surrounding the earth from. Oh, it's, it's the earth is a flat, and the, and there's a wall fence, and then in the top of the fence, in the top of the wall, like a room, there is. A dome that mm -hmm. is or a roof 
that is the sky and well, the reason the sky is blue because of that mountain it's clear i mean what's wrong with you come on is it clear? doesn't say that or i'm saying that yeah and there's a man overlooking this world and the color of the sky takes from it the lost program yeah true story mm -hmm. brother this is a pure science islamic science yeah, yeah uh, i've never heard of this one but yeah that's that's do you, have, do you have more miracles? Oh, well, I'm Come on, Dean. Leave Islam, my friend. You are smarter than this. You are trying to, uh, you know, okay, well, I'm, you know, obviously, I can tell you, you know, you, you yourself, you are not convinced for a second with this madness. I, yeah, I've, I've questioned it before, but I've never, um, you know, I've never really actually looked into the miracles. Yes, a friend. Anything you see, bring me anything about this cult. This is the most silly, stupid cult ever you can imagine. Yeah, mm -hmm. You speak Arabic, so you have an advantage. You see, they can yeah. fool someone. He don't speak Arabic. He know nothing about Arabic. They can say things does not exist there or fabricate. But you speak Arabic. I mean, how is it? And yeah, that's the biggest thing. I'm seeing. I'm looking at the translation, and they're not. They keep adding stuff that's not in the in the Arabic. So that's, no, 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 it is in the, yeah, in the translation, correct, yeah. But actually, yeah. But do you know that Ibn Kathir in Arabic mm -hmm. is, like, this appeared totally in English? There's, there's hundreds of pages from Ibn Kathir in Arabic is taken away from the English translation. I can't find Why? that. They took it off. Anything would look embarrassing for Muhammad. As an example, the story, uh, if you go to read Ibn Kathir in English, mm -hmm. Read the story mm -hmm. about Al Gharaniq. You know, you heard about Al Gharaniq, right? When Muhammad he says the three daughters of Allah, their intercession it's a must. So, all the story there in the Bikathir, what happened exactly is gone. You open mm. the in Arabic, you speak Arabic, open the Bikathir in Arabic, open the Bikathir in English website, and read, you will see it's gone. Mm. Huh. The story of him booing down is gone, the story what he said is gone, everything is gone. Yeah. Uh, uh. What else? Uh, what else they told you? Well, I'm, I'm out of miracles. I don't. Uh, <laughs> You're out of yeah, miracles. I mean, even guys. They say even the, the, our the friend, our friend Dean. By the way, you're, uh, I welcome you to call me anytime. You are a nice person. But okay. our friend Dean is out of animation. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, okay. I, so when I originally called, so I see, in, yeah, and you. You're doing a good job of proving that the Quran, there's no, the, the truth is not in the Quran, I, you know, I, I see that, but now, a lot of the stuff you can also, you know, turn on to the Bible, and I don't, I don't know where the truth is in the Bible either, so that's, that's where I'm... My friend, let us take yeah. it step by step. So, okay. did you decide to leave Islam? No, I haven't. But you just say the truth is not in the Quran, you just said that. Well, you, and that's what you're, I, I Okay, I'm, but do you agree? I mean, uh, come on, be honest, Teddy. After yeah. all what I showed you, is that the truth yeah. in your eyes? Be honest. Is yeah. what is written in the Quran, is that the truth? The sperm so, became so, a congealed the blood. No, from what I've seen, it's, uh, yeah, what you showed me uh, and what I've looked up, it's, it's wrong. Yeah. Okay, so, well, uh, uh, let us uh, first come mm -hmm. to, an, uh, to a decision. Islam is right, yes or no, and then we can go to the Bible. <laughs> but, you know, but the Bible, even it seems like it's going from one cult to another cult. So I don't, I My don't friend, know. You see, you can say whatever you want. You know, can say the Bible just, is wrong, no problem. Yeah. And first, we finish from Islam, and then if you want, you can go and see in the Bible, and we will see together if this is a cult or not. You see, the, the, the problem is. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when somebody uh, try to speak about the Bible, mm -hmm. you know what the Bible is first? It's a collection of, of 66 books. Yeah, but what it is? Uh, it's um, people, I, I say it's a bunch of legends. Okay, no, and, no. Let, uh, let me tell you. The Bible yeah. is yeah. history, mm -hmm. history of a man, stories okay. of the man, so Okay. And the words of God, which mean there's parts where God is talking, mm -hmm. and there's 
big part where he said, she said, this king, he said, this prophet, he told this person. So mm -hmm. stories, all right? So okay. if you wanted to, if you want to judge God, you uh -huh. judge God by his teaching. Where's the that? Rest, which means, okay, uh -huh. Jesus said to me, do this. That is God. For me, Jesus is God. All right? Okay. Okay. Now, if, uh, if there is a story about a, a king fighting with other king, this is history. And it's written there because this is the history of the Jews struggling with God, disobeying or obeying. So the Bible is very honest and writing history. As an example, when David disobeyed God, the Bible says David disobeyed God, as simple as that. Mm -hmm. So it is a history of sin, people committing sin against God, people commit sin against each other, people doing bad and good. That part is for us to learn about history. However, okay. there's a part where God, he speak. So when you want to judge, you judge what God said, not what I say. Let us say I was exist in the time of David. I enter upon David. I say, David, you are blah, 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 blah. Okay. And then the, the one who they are collecting the history, they wrote that in the Bible because we as a Christian, you know, we don't say the same as Muslim. The Muslim, they say the Quran, every letter there is written by the, by God himself, correct? Right. No. For us, we don't believe in that. For us, we believe that the word of God is in the Bible. But in there too, there's man history, which means this is a book written by the man about God and about the man. So there's a stories about the man and there's a stories coming from God. Same things, uh, God, he gave orders. So God said is God said. Man said is man said. Uh, okay, but how do you know it's coming from God? It says, it says there, it says. Just be, so because it says it's coming from God, that means it's coming from God. My friend, okay, yeah, the but Quran yeah. says the Quran says it's, it's, no, 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 no. It's you see, God. but so you, can, you know, you can you can prove easy what is uh, huh? what is can, can be from God, what is not. It, it, just the same. We can use the same method we use here, like mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, the Muslims. The, the problem with Muslims, they have mm -hmm. like stories of uh, like they say to you, uh, Samson. He left. Uh, he he lost his uh, uh, his power because uh, the he cut his hair. But this mm -hmm. is not about this is not because of his hair this is about he this you know it's about sin the same as adam he lost his eternal life because he commits sin so he have adam he have an absolutely amazing power to live forever he is in heaven that power is taken from him so all the bible is from the beginning to the end even the storage which is you can say literally we can take them those stories are spiritual stories. Even the names of the Bible are spiritual names. As an example, when we say, uh, you know, you can go right now, you can do this, you know, when you, you have time. Check the name of every name in the Bible. You will see they are not names. Not mm. a single one of them is a name. It's a sentence. It's a statement. It's a spiritual statement. God okay. is with us. God is all here in like Ishmael, you know, Abraham. Yeah. Abraham is Abraham, the one who crossed the river, the one who crossed from the other side. Moses or Moshe is the one who survived the, you know, the, the drowning. So there's no names in the in the Bible. So the Bible is very, very deep book. So what some naive people try to do, they go and read two words and they think this is just we learn the Bible. The Bible is not just what you think. It is very extremely deep. If you go start from the book of Genesis, go right away and then... If you read even the books of uh, uh, the, the names of the sons of Noah, you will find that all the names of the sons of Noah are speaking about Jesus. Imagine even their names. Speaking about God will come down to the earth. There's ten names, and those names all then they present the story of Christ. But when we read them, because we don't speak the language, and you don't know what they mean, you think it's just a name. Yeah. So the Bible is a different story. Quran is just a... Somebody, you know, when you've been in a school, maybe the teacher, she asked you to make uh, something to put it like in the wall, in the school, you know what I mean? Yeah. This is the Quran. It's a bunch of kids putting papers in the wall. And none of the papers connected to, uh, like, they, it's, it's, it's uh, suffering from flight of thoughts, while the Bible is extremely deep and amazing. Book. Um. You can go right now and read, you see, because the... the you know, like when you read the, uh, let's say, 
the Old Testament. The Old Testament is a very interesting book if you like to, le to learn about the background of mm -hmm. man and God. But for me, I find, I find it more interesting for me uh, to focus in the New Testament. Why? Because that one is just to teach me things about man was, and then the Bible in the New Testament tell me about I am, me. So mm -hmm. because I care for me, and the rest is just to give me a background, then I focus on what Jesus says to me. How we arrive, the Old Testament, all of it is about how we arrive to the stage where the Messiah, he come to us. This is the important for us as the Christians. The rest is history. I don't really care if David, he have war. I don't care if, uh, I don't care. This is history, it's gone. Those people, are the one, they are dead and God will judge them for what they did. So wow. my, what I care for is Christ, he came to save me mm -hmm. and the rest is history. Christ came. So why do you think, I mean, you, like you said, we're just a little tiny dust in a million, millions of planets and galaxies. Why do you, why do you think Christ came to this planet specifically? There's so much more to the galaxy. It doesn't matter. Let us say, let us, for the sake of argument, say that mm -hmm. God He created a human being in many galaxies. God, yeah. we believe God is love. Our God have different character from all other religions. So we believe God is love. This is what the Bible says. God is love, literally. So okay. because God is love, that means he created us because he loves us, not because he want to abuse us. And okay. if you love somebody, aren't you willing to go and save that body? You do. Yeah. So it doesn't matter how small we are, and we are nothing for him. But he is an absolute, absolute loving. His love, his nature, this is his nature. You know, it's like saying, why love? Uh, you say to somebody, why love is uh, like, uh, is uh, why somebody... Why somebody he go and he uh, like his family is in the house. He jump inside the house. There's a fire and just to save his child, he would die there because this is love, my friend. Yeah. It's something you cannot explain because it is more than we we can explain. God, He created such a thing for this is coming from Him. He is the source of all love. So when a woman in the other day I saw a video. I don't know if you saw it in the internet. Where there is a, a a dog, a female dog, uh, she put her babies in like a hole in, you know, in the ground, and then mm -hmm. the ground collapsed. And if you see this dog, you know they are trying to to dig the the ground to save the the puppies, but the dog she keep jumping in and she wanna push the the you know she is so crazy to she's a dog, but yet she mm -hmm. knew she's a mother, you know. Mm -hmm. You see how amazing it is. So you ask yourself, okay, why well, she is doing that? She might die too, but she don't care. She is not thinking. She wanna go and save them. And even the rescue, they are trying to 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 take the the, the puppies from the ground. She is bothering them because she keep jumping. They push her away, and she keep jumping. They cannot use tools to take to take the the the, the rocks. So this is amazing love, which is created by God. He put it inside those we call them mothers, even if they are animals. So, love cannot be explained, for it's a miracle of God, and God is a miracle. Okay, I mean, yeah, I have to, because from from coming from this, from, you know, the Islamic point of view, I've always thought uh, almost like Christianity is almost like its own cult. And um, you see, if, when, if when you say cult, my friend, when you say cult, yeah. what, what will make a cult a cult? Cult, if the leader he wants to have sex with our wives. If the cult he want our woman, yes, it's about money. Cult is about money, sex. This is what it is about, you know. So did the Messiah did that? No. Did he ask her for any return? No. Did he ask for money? No. Read the whole Bible. He did not own anything. Mm -hmm. He had wow. nothing, you know. And remember, the Messiah, even the Quran confirm he can raise people from death. Is that true? Yeah. I'm okay. But imagine, my friend Dean. Imagine mm -hmm. I, you know, today, I can raise people from death. Do you know how much power that can give me in this earth? How many kings will bow down under my, 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 my feet to, to bring them back to life? A lot. Yeah. They will give me all their kingdoms. This is amazing power. So, yeah. but yet the Messiah, he have nothing. He never asked for anything. He never asked for money. He never asked for a, a, a Muhammad. He gave himself a privilege. So this is how you know the cult. The Messiah, he yeah. gave himself. He did not ask us. It's the opposite. So how, how do you know he raised people from the dead? 
or how do you know? Well, you or, know, uh, you see, yeah. we as a Christian, we witness miracles in our life every day. I know which, a which lot. Which ones? Of, Give me one example. You can go search right now and see yeah. life stories. You can ask people. You, you know, you want to believe? You don't believe? It's up to you. But God always, He don't leave Himself without witnesses. There is tons of miracles. However, the okay. Bible, the Bible confirmed that Jesus did tons of miracles. Even Muhammad, who is a liar for me, as I believe, he confirmed yeah. that Jesus did miracles nobody can do, including even creating from the mud a bird. Which means even the enemies of Jesus, they could not deny who is Jesus. Even Satan, he could not deny who is Jesus. So, the second you believe in Christ, you are a different person. And this is the biggest miracle. I know I met people who used to be terrorists, and they became amazing people, peaceful, beautiful people. I know people who they used to be criminals, just because they became a Christian, they became so peaceful, so amazing. So this is a this is a living miracle of a human being. How God He can change you, but in Islam the opposite. You convert to Islam second day, you want to join Mujahideen and you want to kill people. <laughs> yeah, like a police officer just two weeks ago. He you know he converted to Islam a year ago. A year after he take a knife, he attacked the police station. Allah Akbar. I mean, you just convert to Islam. What happened? All his life was a policeman protecting the people. He converted to Islam. He want to do the opposite. So, you know, the, the, uh, uh, like. The, the, the Bible says, from their fruits, you shall know them. So in order to know which one is cult, don't judge Christianity by me. I am no one who I am. I'm not, I'm not Jesus. I am not, I'm, I'm no one. So if you want to judge Christianity to be cult or not, go mm -hmm. and see the fruits of Jesus. If which, you, are in the, in, which are in the Bible. Which is in the Bible, no, which is in us. Because you see, if I am a person who follow Jesus, look what Jesus says to me. If I practice what Jesus said, Jesus said, never lie. Either you say yay, yay, or nay, nay, which means you don't even take an oath. So mm. lies is gone. Jesus says, love your enemy, bless those who curse you. Huh? Okay. okay. Imagine, uh, Dean, if all the world practice just one sentence of Jesus, just this one sentence, forget about the whole book. Love your enemy. What do you think mm -hmm. will happen in this earth? It will be better. What better? There's going to be heaven. Yeah. Right? We will not need weapon. We will not need army. Do you know how much we spend money on the, in, in, in stupid uh, war machines? Most of our, even poor countries, they spend most of their budget in, in, in war machines. Their people but, are dying, but yet they are spending trillions of dollars in buying rusty uh, 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 steel. So, a human being, life can change if we follow Jesus. Jesus can change you, my friend. Love you, but, but um, you know, the Bible. I mean, he, he doesn't just say love thy enemy. Is you know, there's there's this. The Bible also condones slavery. God, you know, no, that's not, that's not true, that my different? friend. That's not true. You see, true. this is all is wrong understanding. You okay. see, the Jews they live by the law, eye for an eye. So, which mean, it, the Messiah he says, uh, don't do evil don't do evil don't be like them so uh, when when he says if somebody uh, slam your right cheek give him the other one and it says it clearly don't do evil as they do so uh, the old testament it's about people who want to survive the jews you see if we, we, we want to be honest about what happened we cannot judge the jews who lived three four thousand years ago by by what's happening today at that time the Jews they they've been taken for hundreds of years as slaves the whole nation so you are asking the Jews that you cannot treat your enemy the way they treat you but your enemy can treat you as they wish and that will prove that you are a good person this is what you are saying to me right um, so I can come to Dean I can take his wife yeah. I can take him as a slave and this Dean he's a good guy so what he will do, his job is to let me do it. This is what you are saying, right? Yeah, but this is not this is not this is not real. This is not, you know, this is like just a, a fantasy of of, uh, of philosophy, you know. Those people they are real people who live in a certain time and the time is extremely harsh, extremely bad and they have to survive. You you heard that the Jews they've been enslaved by the Assyrian, correct? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the whole nation been taken. I mean, imagine the whole nation, not like a two or three. They took them all of them. 
the women, the children, the goats, the cows, everything. And the same happened to them by the Egyptian, correct? Yeah. So in order to judge somebody, we judge him by the time he lived. Muhammad, he came 600 years after Jesus. So after Jesus said, love your enemy, making a human being live forward, higher standard from before. Things is changing forward. Muhammad, he took us back to the cave time. Well, I don't, I don't agree with just someone by the time they lived. I don't know about that. No, you know, we have to agree. Like, imagine yeah. you say to me, we have a uh -huh. law for cyber uh, cyber crimes, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, but at that time, what if it, imagine you make a cyber crime uh, law at that time, people will laugh at you, right? Right. Okay. Right. right. So everything have a timing and have a reason. So uh, 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 when, uh, you know, like you said to me about the law, uh, like Musa says to his people, do this and do that. But mm. most of those things, if Musa says those things today, people will laugh at him. Right. Yeah. Because what you know, like imagine uh, make a law, you have to go away from the camp when you do your, uh, you know, like the call of nature. I mean, uh, we have the bathroom just a few steps away from in our house. So every, you know, in order to judge an order, you have to judge it by the time it happened. First, we have to see if it's justice. We have to see if it's evil. We have to see how those people are treated. Those people, they have a very savage life, surrounded by savage, surrounded by people who believe in slavery, surrounded by people who don't believe in God, surrounded by people who believe in killing and kidnapping and taking your money. This is how what they have around them. It's like, mm -hmm. like those movies, if you see those movies, fantasy movies, like they show you uh, crazy people, they have very weird hair and they have drugs and guns and they chase each other and they kidnap them and they put them, make them as a slaves. You know, those fiction movies. This yeah. is exactly what was happening at that time. Ugly, very ugly life. You do not, you are not sure if tomorrow will come and you are free. This is the situation. Your neighbor tribe can attack you and take mm. you as a slave and that's it, you lost your freedom. So, this, so, so slavery, so the slavery was okay back then? It's not, it's okay. This is what people, this is the evil of the people they are doing to each other. So, oh. you know, uh, 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 let, let me show you something from the Quran. You see Muhammad, because he associate himself with the Jews a lot. So Muhammad, he understood the law of Moses very wrong. Mm -hmm. Look what he says in the Quran. Look with me in the screen. Mm -hmm. Muhammad here is trying to be a Jew. But he tried, but he get himself busted. Oh, who you believe? Reta retaliation in, is prescribed for you in the matter of a murder. So this is a matter of what? Murder. Yeah. Okay. The free man for the free man. <laughs> yeah. And the slave yeah. for the slave. And the female for the female. But this is not what eye for an eye is. Yeah. Eye for an eye, if you kill my wife, I don't go and kill your wife. <laughs> mm. I kill the one who killed my wife. This is eye for an eye. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah if you yeah, kill yeah. my slave, I don't go and kill your slave. Because the slave did not do anything. Why do you want to kill him? The free man for the free man, and the slave for the slave, and the free man for the free man. Hmm. Yeah, that doesn't work. Okay. So eye, eye for an eye is about, uh, let us say, public justice. You attack yeah. me, you take us, you enslave us. I'm going to attack you and I will do to you what you did to me. All right? Muhammad, he took the law of the of Moses, but he practiced it in a very funny, stupid way. Because free man for the free man, that's mean that if a free man kill a free man, the free man will be killed. If a free man kill a slave, a slave would be killed. Slave for the slave. So a slave, he die, a slave will be killed. If you go and read the interpretation, you will see clearly, it says, if a free man kill a slave, a free man will not be killed. And then he says, female for the female, but this is stupid. What do you mean, female? Uh, you should say, yeah. the one yeah. who killed the female should be killed. Yeah. So mm -hmm. later, Muhammad, when he did this law, people, they start laughing at him. He abrogated this verse. If you ask Muslim, they will say to you, this is abrogated. Okay. Why did Allah find himself funny and stupid? Yes, he found himself stupid and people laugh at him. 
Otherwise, he will keep it. Ask, yeah. ask yourself, I am a prophet. I make a verse. Why after two weeks or three weeks I will abrogate it? Doesn't make sense. It's not I would like, you know, if this, if Muhammad, if this is a verse was given by Moses and Muhammad came a thousand years after, I understand. There's a huge different timing, as we said, because there's a law match with the timing. But this is the same prophet. After a few weeks, he changed his mind because people, they start laughing at him. For this is not a justice. Yeah. So yeah. if you want to understand what people, they practice during their lifetime, you have to put yourself in their shoes. Muhammad, he did nothing and he have no God. This guy, he is, is, he is a stealing law of somebody. And because he didn't understand their law, his law became funny. This is not what Musa said. Mm, you know yeah, I mean? So, okay. yeah. So um, when you see in the when you see in the old old testament uh, war, well, those people, everybody, his hand on them, everybody want to kill them, everybody want to fight them. So they are living in the time where everybody attacking everybody, everybody want to take them slaves. So either you either you die or they die. As simple as that. This is the balance. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Roman yeah. the Roman and the Persian, before Christianity, they were killing each other for how many years? More than 300 years. None of yeah. Okay, what is, the, what is the reason? I mean, did the Roman have enough land? No, they never have enough land. They want to take more and more. And the same as the Persian. And then Muhammad, he did the same. And his followers. So, all of this is about evil and power and money. And slavery is a source of money. Yeah, yes, yeah. Uh, so what I'm trying to say to you, in order uh -huh. to judge somebody, uh -huh. live in his time. So to judge Muhammad, so live in his time. Judge no him. problem. You, you know, no problem. You can't you judge him on the nine-year-old. No, I, can, I, 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 I have to judge him. Yeah, I have to judge him. him. I have to mm. judge him by his time. As an example, the Christian they never attack Muhammad. So why he attacked him? No problem. I mean, okay, if somebody attack you. Okay, protect yourself. You have the right to defend yourself. But the Christian, actually, even the Muslim, they're saying, the Christians, they gave him refugee in Ethiopia, which means if not the Christians, he will be dead. Mm. Yeah. Is that how you return? The, the Jews, the Jews, Muhammad, he ran away from Quraysh. He went to Yathrib. Yathrib, this is, this is the city of the Jews. They welcome you in their city. Why you kill them later? Yeah. Yeah. So here we, don't, we, we see a, a person, you know, like, I mean, if you have a dog, you feed him, you give him a bone, he would never bite you. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So if we yeah. want to compare, if we want to see, okay, well, at that time, life is evil, life is ugly, life is disgusting. But Muhammad, mm. he was just following the, the same life. He, he did not make it better, he made it more ugly. Actually, he made it legally in the name of God. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Like but, when he says go and attack the Christians and the Jews and force them to pages, yeah. Okay, what is the purpose of this? Do you know what was the purpose? So they don't die. No, no, I mean why why he did decide to attack the Christians? What happened? Oh he just um I don't know. I he just wanted to be a a, a warlord, so he wanted to No no actually there's more than this. You see, we have to go, we, uh, this is why I advise you, uh, Dean, when uh -huh. you read anything, to go deeper than what its appearance and try to, uh -huh. to get the, the story. You see, if you go to the verse before it, uh -huh. chapter 9, verse 28, it says, O who you believe, the idolaters only are unclean, nudges, filthy, filthy, you know what nudges mean, right? So let them yeah. not to come near the, in, the, 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 uh, the holy city. Okay. And so now there's no business because nobody can enter uh, Mecca and people will die. Where is the business? Look what look what we said. Look at this. So if you fear poverty from losing of their merchandise, this is the translation of the Muslims. Allah yeah. shall preserve you of his bounty. How? The verse after it. Fight against the Christian and the Jews and force them to pages. Yeah. Do you see it? <laughs> yes. So it was yeah. it was a clear theft. It was, uh, he made an order and now he cannot kind of take it back. He said that those are clean, don't let them come here. People they start complaining. How we will live? 
who's going to go and uh, visit the, the, the Kaaba and spend money here? The Kaaba is a is a big business. It's a pagan business. So, wow. Muhammad, you have to come with a solution. Attack the Christians, force them to pay Jizya. And look here at the hypocrite Muhammad. Christians, they worship Jesus as God, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Muhammad is willing to let you worship Jesus if you pay him money. <laughs> I mean, isn't it obvious? You see, the Jews, the Jews, they fought people who don't believe. Right? They fought with people yeah. who don't believe. So, they did not say to them, if you pay us, it's okay for us. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, yeah. he can bribe his God. Just give him money. Okay, worship whatever you want. You want to worship Jesus? Worship Jesus. <laughs> you want to worship Obama? Worship Obama. You want to make a Trump as God? No problem. Give us money. This is what Muhammad is saying. Maybe he's just calling him. He's being nice. No, this is about money. Yeah. Right, my friend, yeah. it's in front of you. If yeah, you feel a property... Allah will Allah will give you a solution. Don't worry. What the solution? Attack the Christians. Attack mm -hmm. the Christians until they pay you, not until they convert to Islam. Actually, mm -hmm. during the time of the Caliphate, there's um, uh, uh, some Christian villages in in Egypt. They send letters to the Caliphate uh, through the Muslims, saying that those uh, uh, those villages they want to convert to Islam because they don't have money to pay Jizya. The caliphate refused. He said, if we make everybody convert, who is going to pay us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, Christian friends. Uh, thank you for this. This was good. Yeah. So, um, but did you decide to leave Islam at least? It's, yeah. I didn't completely decide, but it's almost there. Almost there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have fun, my friend. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank are you. you. Are you shy to say I'm, I'm out of Islam? Is that the reason? Are you like, uh, do you fear people? No. Do you fear anyone? It's, yeah, I mean, of, of course, yeah. It, it, it feels weird, but, you know, if, if I completely leave Islam, it makes me doubt if there's even a God in the first place. Which is, my friend, it's know, better it's, to doubt a God from worshipping a false God. No problem. Who said that yeah. it's wrong to doubt that there's a God or not? Actually, the, 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 a great believer is the one first he question if God is exists or not. And then you come to a conclusion, and that conclusion will lead you to enter decision, and then the decision will be came after thinking, not being a blind. You know what I mean? So nothing yeah. wrong. Me, me, myself, who said that I'm born as a believer? That's silly and that's stupid. You know, yeah. all of us we mm -hmm. question. All of us we wonder, like maybe, maybe mm -hmm. Christianity is false. Maybe there's, maybe Jesus is just a normal person. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I ask yeah. myself all those questions. So nothing wrong with saying I am out of this, and being an atheist mm -hmm. for a second is better than being a slave of God, which is false God for all your life. I do. Yeah, I do. You know, at least free yourself. And then you can you are you you have a you are a free thinker think, be free, yeah. Yeah. you know. It's like yeah. you know how I can see. Uh, I mean, what is out of this box if I don't jump out of it? Then I have a, I have a question for you. Then how did you how did how did you come to realize that God existed? Well, there is many ways, you know. You see, mm -hmm. the, the 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 first thing will will uh, will take my attention is how mm -hmm. deep. The teaching of the messiah when you read any of his statements mm -hmm. you will see that even though he spoke two thousand years ago even though you are reading a translation which will make it less let us say i mean it's like we lose a lot of uh, the, 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 you know let us say the language power you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but it's mm -hmm. still you will see that you feel something it's like speaking to you about you it's not about jesus if you open any chapter, wherever Jesus he spoke, you will find that he is talking to you about today, your life problem, not about something happening 2,000 years ago. Which means this message is very special. It doesn't expire. It's not about certain time. It's about you and God. It's not about all people. It's about you as a person. So I speak to you in a very personal way. I never read oh. the Bible, I never read the speech of the Messiah, even though I did read it 100 times, each time I read, I, I learn something new, and I feel something different. 
Yeah, I, I, when, I, when I read the Quran, I was always feeling something. You know, sometimes I cried too. So you know. maybe because this yeah. under the influence, you you cry from what? From this? Yeah, I, <laughs> or just listening to it sometimes. Yeah, my yeah. friend, maybe because you are not and you are not having a, a deep thinking. Uh, yeah, you know, like uh, uh, you know Arabic, right? Read with me carefully. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You said you cry. I want to make you cry now. Read this. Okay. <laughs> you see, I did not change the verse. Here we go in front of us. It says, "اتخذوا أحبارهم ورهبانهم أربابا من دون الله والمسيح." Disaster. <laughs> Here we go. I told you you will laugh. Here we go. What kind of religion this religion is? This is Arabic. How you say? They took their monks and rabbi as gods instead of Allah and the Messiah. Yeah. And then the Muslims, in order to fix it, they say, no, no, no. Here, Al-Masih, go back to the wa the, it go back to Ahbarahum Warubanahum. I never heard of such a thing. It says it clearly. They took their rabbi and their monks as God instead of Allah and the Messiah. Anyone who speaks Arabic, he will notice the Quran saying that you should take Allah and the Messiah as God. But in the translation, it's different. Yeah, I don't know. I have to look into that. But this is what says in Arabic, correct? I'm not making things up. Yeah, I know. No, no, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, so yeah, in, in the that. translation, they fabricated, they changed everything, and they tried to say, oh, no, uh, here in Masih, he is saying they took their rabbi and their monks and the Masih instead of Allah. But it doesn't say that. Arabic is so clear. Yeah. yeah. You know? And what mm -hmm. the verse is saying that the Masih and Allah is one God. Okay. All right. So, when you say to me you used to read the Quran and cry, I think mm -hmm. you were maybe cutting some onion, my friend. <laughs> not even now. Not even reading it. Just listening to it. You know, they say the poetry. Ah, let me tell you. Like you see, singing, this is you know? the influence of a nice voice singing yeah. something. If you bring the same guy, he sing. Uh, uh, do you know the story of this guy? What his name? The Sheikh who. Uh, who made the, the chapter is called the chapter of a tufaha no yeah there's a very famous uh, scholar uh, muslim uh, sheikh uh, she, uh, saudi so they have a conference let me see maybe i can find it for you on youtube hold on so uh, you know they want to show them how powerful the quran is so he said who is here a volunteer to come to the stage and uh, uh you know a french guy he came he don't speak uh, arabic mm -hmm. so they said to him the Sheikh now is going to recite to you two things and he will sing them in the same way. You mm -hmm. tell us which one touch your heart. You know? And okay. the Sheikh, uh, I, I will find you there. <laughs> the Sheikh, okay. he, he recite two chapter. One of them he fabricated. It's about the apple. Mm -hmm. All right? And the other one is the Quran. And then he asked him, which one touch your heart more? The French guy, he said, the chapter of the apple. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Do you see it in the screen? Search for it. Sheikh al Arifi, Yaqra Surat al Tuffah. And this is the guy. Here we go. This is the French guy in the, in the stage. <laughs> it was a horrible. The guy, he said, okay, listen again. I will repeat it for you again. <laughs> I don't see well, but I don't uh, no, I don't see it yet on your screen. Hopefully someone can put it in the chat so I can oh okay. Oh, yeah, Sheikh Al Arifi from the Surah Yeah, and this and is Sheikh, and this Sheikh is the, and this is the French guy. Al Arifi is very very famous person, you know. So and this is the French guy, and the the guy here is the translator, and this is Al Arifi. So he was saying to him, Okay, I will recite for you a chapter, two chapters. One is a true Quran and one is a fake Quran. You tell me which one touched your heart. Al Arifi, he really did a good job. He sang a chapter which is fabricated. It's called At Tufa. Hasn't singing about At Tufa, however, made it exactly look like Quran. Sound like the Quran. So the guy, that's that's haram. That's, you can't 
He well, he want to show them, my friend, he want to show them how he will make him cry. Even the guy, he do not know which one is Quran. The Quran will touch your heart right away. The guy, he chose the apple chapter. <laughs> oh, wow, and this is very embarrassing and very stupid of them. You know, in the beginning, I thought maybe they got this guy, maybe like, you know, he's one of them. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. okay, he will go on the stage and he will say, I chose this one. But look like it was, it was honest. Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, honest try, but uh, it was honest, yeah, yeah. and this is why they will never do it again. Here we go. This is the link. I will post it here. I wish I can play it because people would die laughing from the singing. And the guy, if you if you hear his singing, he make it look like wrong reading. You know, I mean, the guy he really did a very good job. Uh, so anyone who don't understand the Quran, if you sing anything sound like Quran, and this guy because he's a sheikh, he knew exactly how to make any sentence sound like the Quran by singing mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm going to give you the link, so you can watch it and you can love yeah. it. Uh, when, when. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so hello. What we are saying is, you know, the Bible is from God because when you read it, you feel something. Always, um, my friend. God that's even, what you're, that's what you're trying to tell me. That's yeah. Not exactly. only not only you feel th something. Uh -huh. okay. You see, there is there is a there is a present uh, of God in the in the in the words. Which means you feel you feel something will change you, not something just will touch you for a second and will go. You will change. You will be a different person. So like it's not just like okay, you know, if I go in a hot room, I will get hot, correct? Right. Okay. If I go outside in the cold, I will get cold. But this mm -hmm. has nothing to do with God. When I am in a hot room, I will be hot, right? But if you are really a person who adopt what you just learned, that will change you it's not about now I'm crying it's not about I oh, just I feel something okay. it's about I will be a different person this is why we Christian we I don't know if you heard this term that we say we are born again yeah so I hope. with the Messiah we will be reborn again is that physically reborn it is more than physically reborn it's about me being a new person by Christ so me yesterday, I, I when I was a kid, I don't know how how, how age you are your, is yours. When I was a young, I mm -hmm. if I see a person looking at me, I want to fight. If I see a fight in the end of the street, I run there just to join. You know, mm -hmm. I used to be a totally different person. Just tell me a fight, I will be there right away in two seconds. Don't tell me why. Don't tell me what the reason. You know, I remember once there's the uh, one guy fighting two guys. So I took the side of the one guy because it's not fair. So I took the side. And then we finished the fight, the other two guys, they run away. And then the guy, he says to me, so do I know you? I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> do I know you? I said, no, you don't know me. I do not yeah, need to know you. Why, why, why I need to know you anyway? <laughs> so he said, why you join the fight then? Look at what happened to your shirt. I said, well, well <laughs> none of your business. Just go. Otherwise, I will fight with you too. <laughs> <laughs> so I saw that the guy, he's alone. And he is not in, he is not equal to them. He is a little bit short, and they are taking advantage of him. So I joined the fight of the guy who is weak, and I believe this is the right thing to do. But I used to be a different person since I became, you know, uh, uh, in touch with the Messiah. Um, mm -hmm. I like let us say the process of a changing continue. Mm -hmm. It's not just something would happen in a second. It's going to be a process. It's like a train mm -hmm. going in the right direction. Okay. Bye. All right. Thank you, Christian Prince. All right, I have to go. All right, my friend. Take care. Okay, you too. Bye. -bye. Bye. <clears throat> All right. Well, I can tell that he decided to leave Islam already, but he is shy to say. Right. <clears throat> And maybe next time we will produce the chapter. It's called the chapter of the Tufaha, which means the chapter of the apple. This is the link, by the way. If somebody can translate to many languages, that would be funny. <coughs> what if it was a criminal and there are two cups? That's not a smart question, my friend. People sometimes they say silly stuff. What if he's a criminal and they are two cops? <laughs> oh boy. Ah.
people. So anyway, before we finish for today, just a reminder of what we said today. When a Muslim, he come to you to debate you about the truth, in which book? Is it in the Bible or it is in the Quran? Don't waste your time. Especially if it is a debate, which means it's a between two people. One of them, he is doing it as a business. The Muslim, he is, let us say, a sheikh. He is not coming to debate you. He is just coming to argue. And the argument is very simple. The Bible is corrupted. Then remind him that the Bible is the book of Allah. And if Allah allowed the Bible to be corrupted, that means this is by his will. If it's against his will, that means Allah cannot be God. Because if I do something against the will of God, that will be contradiction for what Muhammad taught. For everything happening in this earth is by the will of Allah. Nothing. And the Quran confirmed that. So remember always this method. The Bible is corrupted, but the Bible is the book of Allah. So the book of Allah is corrupt. It's not The Muslim is not accusing you. Don't start defending the Bible. Don't do that. Put him in the corner in two seconds says, okay, I got you. The Bible of Allah is corrupted. In the second, he will say, no, 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 no. I'm not talking about my, my the Bible of Allah. I'm talking about your Bible. I said, my friend, I don't have Bible. The Bible is the Bible of God. Who is the one who wrote the Injil? He will say, uh, the one who sent the Injil, he will say, Allah. Okay. Now, where is the Injil of Allah? He will say, it's corrupted. Okay, so Allah book is corrupted. So what's my business? <laughs> the debate is over. So a Muslim when he attacked the Bible, he is shooting himself in the foot because there is a weakness in this cult. By Muhammad accepting to say that the God of the Bible is the same God of Islam. He cannot play games no more. For now he is saying that anyone who corrupt the Injil is corrupting Allah words. And if a human can do that to Allah words, that's mean Allah words are not protected by Almighty God, which means Allah is not Almighty God. He is Almighty Fufu. Anyone can change his words. And as long all the books who sent by Allah, according to Muslims, are corrupt, that's mean Allah, he proved to us that he is fufu non-stop over and over and over. Allah was fufu with the Torah. Allah was fufu with the book of Psalm. Allah was fufu with the book of Abraham. Allah was fufu with the book of Suleiman. Allah was fufu with the book of Isa. Allah was fufu with the book of Idris. Allah was fufu with all the names. We don't want to go to count the names because there are 124,000 prophets. All their books Allah could not protect, which means Allah was 123,990 times Fufu. And now the Muslim, they try to present to us that Fufu was a hero. So imagine you go in the stage where it, people, they do wrestling, and you lose 123,999 times, and you win only once. You are the hero. This is the logic of Muhammadan. Allah lost 123,999 time. He could not protect his books. He was able to protect one book. And even then, we go, we find there are stones of hadith proving that the Quran, which the Muslim claiming to be protected, is not protected. Starting from the Muslim saying that the Quran sent in order, which is not what they have today in their hand. And not to forget that the Muslim today, they don't even have the Quran, which is it's between our hand, because nobody have this Quran. This is according to recitation of recitation of recitation of recitation of recitation of Muhammad, which he supposedly got from Allah. But nobody saw Allah. There's no witnesses. In Islam, to prove adultery, you need four witnesses. How about to prove a prophet? 
In Islam, you have to have four witnesses and they have to see the private part of the man going inside the private part of the women, which means if a man is naked and she is naked and they are on the top of each other, that is not adultery in Islam. You have to see the private part going in and out. So how come in adultery we need four witnesses? When it's come to a prophet, he claimed to be a prophet of God. There is zero witnesses. And I don't want to forget to mention that Muhammad, not only he don't have witnesses, he himself is not qualified to be a witness. Why? Because you remember the hadith where it says, the Muslim, they claim, that Muhammad, he was bewitched. Bewitched mean he was under the control of the devil. And he began to imagine that he had done a thing, but in fact, he did not. So how we can trust Muhammad that he saw anything? This guy is obviously, if we accept that he was bewitched, that is horrible. If we accept he have he has, you know, he have a mental illness, that is still a big problem because then how we can trust that he saw anything. A person who is bewitched, the Arab in the old days, anyone, he is suffering from mental illness, they think he is bewitched. They claim magic is the reason for anything wrong. Even if somebody get normal sick, they think it's it is somebody he made the magic for him. Even the sexual relationship of of Muhammad life, it was fake, as you see in the hadith, where it says that the prophet he imagined himself having sex, but in fact he did not. So if his sex was fake, how about his God? He is imagining. If you take this guy to the court and you say I have a guy he's a witness in the crime his name is Muhammad and then the judge or the other lawyer he says sir you cannot accept this uh, witness the judge will say why he says I have here in the file that this person he continued for such and such period imagining things and he was bewitched the judge will refuse this witness immediately do you understand and imagine this is all in Islamic source which is authentic so if the authentic source which is filtered and made in purpose to make Muhammad look like a prophet this is those books are designed to say Muhammad is a prophet not to say the opposite if the book which is made to make Muhammad a prophet saying this so what about the books who is saying or made to say Muhammad is not a prophet what they will say so Muhammad is not a qualified to be a prophet and the proof all over you. Stupid stories in the Quran, stupid fiction stories, superstition, flying carpet, ants, uh, genies, whatever, crazy stuff. Sunset and murky water. The sperm is coming from the backbone of the man. The women have a sperm coming from her ribs. Crazy stuff. So how we can believe Muhammad is a prophet? Anyway, uh, I'm happy that Mr. Dean, he called us, and I can tell he is out of Islam, even though he did not say so yet. And I welcome him again to call me anytime. If you find, if somebody told him anything I said to him is not true, please feel free to call me, and you will see that this is, we will never share with a Muslim something is not true. Because always you can call me back, and you can get me busted. And that will be very embarrassing everything I say you see like we have this video I encourage our friend Dean who called me download the video and check everything we say to you one by one check the tafsir check the interpretation check Ibn Kathir check Al-Qurtabi check a Jalalain and read by yourself and come back to me my friend and you will see we are not lying to you I want to say thank you all for being here don't forget guys to subscribe to this channel how many of you subscribe here don't forget to subscribe so guys remember when a Muslim he speak against the Bible tell him okay I got it the Bible of Allah is corrupted right away you will see how the color of his face change just use your logic think about it what this guy is trying to say to me this guy he believed that Allah is the one who sent the Bible and now he's saying to me the Bible is corrupted. So he's saying to me without knowing that he is saying that the book of his the book of his God is corrupted. So what's my business? 
It's like somebody getting a gun and shooting himself in the foot literally He's accusing his God not to be God. So what's my business? The book always belong to the author not to the follower if you buy my book from Amazon that will not make it your book this is my book do you understand so if Allah is the one who sent the Injil and he is the one who sent the Torah that's mean he is the one responsible for those books a human being cannot be responsible for preserving anything because even the Quran says so the Quran says inna alayna jam'uhu wa Quranahu. It is on us to recite and to collect, but Allah never recite and never collect because Muhammad, even the Muslim, agree that the one who recited the Quran to Muhammad was Jibreel. What is this verse? Uh, okay, Jama'uhu wa Quranahu. And the one who collected the Quran according to Muhammad, it was Uthman. So what is Allah prom promise? See, this is a chapter 75, verse number 16. It is upon us to recite the Quran and to put the Quran together. Who is talking? Allah. Is Uthman is Allah? No. Even Uthman, he burned many Quran during his lifetime. If the Quran is a one book, why he's burned the rest? Obviously, there's a lot of differences. The first ever human being who burned Quran, it was Muslims. The Caliphate, exactly. And the Quran say clearly, the only one who will collect the Quran is Allah. Look what uh, Muhammad is saying. Allah, he did collect the Quran through mankind. But this is what, what the verse is saying. If the verse want to say, I will collect it by you, then he will say that. He says, Inna alayna, it's on us. <laughs> and by the way, what do you mean by, by a human being? Even your story says that the Sahaba, they die, and all, a lot of Quran is missing. Aisha, she says, Al-Ahzab used to be equal to Al-Baqarah, which means more than 200 verses are missing in one chapter. Where is what do you mean? We're preserved. Can you recite for me the chapter of a breastfeeding? Here we go. I'm listening. Can you type it for us? Type for me the chapter of breastfeeding for adult. Type it as long as it's preserved. <laughs> oh boy. <coughs> anyway, I want to say thank you guys for being here. I'm I'm losing my voice. I wish you uh, a great weekend. Uh, it's already Saturday here. It's already 1 a.m. in the morning. And I start a couple of hours ago. How many hours we are here live? I start at 9. So, mm, man, that's we are here for long. Anyway, uh, did we learn good, uh, good stuff today? I hope we did. And don't forget to download the video and share it with your friends. We don't we keep them long. We don't keep them long in our channel. And don't forget again, please, to tell your friends that this is the channel we will do live podcast. This is why today we have small number because not many people knows that we are here. All right. Thank you, and may the Lord bless you. And I will see you soon again. Christ is Lord. Islam is false, and we we'll see you with the blessing of the Lord, and we leave you with the blessing of the Lord for the weekend. And don't forget, if you go to the church this Sunday, or if you pray in your house, because at the end of the day, it's what you, uh, it's it's you pray to the Lord, not where you pray. The Lord he says, go to your closet and pray alone. You know, it's not it's not uh, it's not about praying in front of the crowd. It's about being a person who says something from your heart. Pray for our friend, Mr. Dean, so he will see the truth, and the truth will set him free. Today we have a journey with him to explain to him. Still, he need to be touched by heart. He need to see the truth. And I pray, and I hope you pray with me, that Dean is going to see the truth and will come to Christ soon. Uh, you know, each time a Muslim he leave Islam, he don't just leave Islam. 
he became a warrior because those people they left something for them present identity so he will become a warrior and that will make him a warrior for Christ and will bring a lot of Muslims to Christ starting from his own families and this is the experience of all those people who left Islam after talking to me first he leave Islam then his family come out you start with one you end with five and the five became ten and the ten became twenty and the twenty became fifty etc because then they will became warriors for Christ in peace in love not by doing jihad and killing so we pray for our friend to see the truth and the truth will set him free and we pray that all of you, you will have a peaceful weekend beautiful time with your family and enjoy the cold which I have here which is a snow Christ is Lord Islam is false and see you soon bye bye